On tonight's episode of the Gamecasters, we talk about all the games we've been playing recently, we discuss our gaming pet peeves, and then we do our top five games that make me feel smarter. Stay tuned. Game. Welcome back to episode 29 of the Gamecasters. My name is Ryan. And I'm Natalie. And I'd like to take this opportunity to fully and permanently announce, well, the announcement's not permanent. I guess it is. Our new permanent member of the show, Jeffrey Madigan, the Mad Board Gamer. Welcome, Jeffrey. Jeff is now going to be a permanent member of the show, as I just said moments ago. (laughs) How do you feel about this, Jeff? Honored (laughs) is the first word that comes to my head, I think. Do you have a speech Um, prepared? (laughs) I don't. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. But I'm just so happy. We're to be short here. on time anyway. Yeah, so oh that'll be the episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So 28.75. <laughs> I that. have been trying to get Jeff on the show, like, as a permanent fixer for a long time. We've, I mean, it's great doing the show with just Natalie and me, but I, I always feel like it's good to have, because Natalie and I are so similar in so many ways, it's good to have... Someone who just completely contradicts our thoughts in well, every he, way. We also play all, every game together. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So it's good to have Jeff who, you know, gets out there and actually has a social life <laughs> and plays with other human beings. <laughs> and so we get to hear, how's things in the world, Jeff? <laughs> What's going on outside? Yeah, how are things going? <laughs> um, so anyway, we are just, we are so happy to have you as a permanent member of the show. This is fantastic. Everyone, I think, listening uh, probably feels the same way. Uh, there's just a whole different dynamic having you here. And it's just amazing for all of us. So with that sappy bullshit out of the way, I would like to talk about um, something that actually you, and maybe one of your your f- amazing first amazing contributions to the show, told me Ooh. about, was All this right. awesome podcast called Death by Monsters. Yes. Do you remember telling me about that like a couple episodes ago? Because yeah. we were talking about the Dietlof Pass. Yeah, the Dietlof. Dietlof. It's this pass in Russia. Okay, this is the craziest story ever. One day Jeff came over and before we started recording the episode, he was like, oh my gosh, you guys, this story I just heard on this podcast is insanity. And I'm going to tease it for you just a little bit here, listeners. So when uh, you hear this, you're going you're gonna to want to go to probably Wikipedia and just fall yeah, down a just, rabbit hole. Yeah, rabbit hole on the internet. Right. But I will, I will encourage you to listen to episode six and seven of the Death by Monsters podcast where they talk all about this in a very hilarious way. And I'll talk about more about the show in a second. But this story, okay, it's called the Dietlof Pass. And basically what it is, it's this, there was these, a group of hikers, there was 10 of them to start out with. And they went up into the Ural Mountains in northern Russia because they were trying to get their uh, grade three hiking certification. These are like experienced hikers, right? Going out into the the wilderness. Yeah. One of these 10 people ends up getting sick and leaves to go home. He's so sad, uh, not realizing that he's going to be the only one left to survive. (laughs) These nine hikers, they get to this one spot in the mountains and they decide, okay, uh, you know, the weather's a little too bad. We have to camp for the night. Sometime in the middle of the night. Some compelling force, and that's what the coroners said they died of, and a natural compelling force, unknown compelling force, caused these hikers to, from the inside of their tent, rip and cut their way out of the tent from the inside. Mind you, they're in sub-zero temperatures in the Ural Mountains of Russia, (laughs) right? There's thousands and thousands of feet of snow. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe not that many. Thousands of feet? <laughs> Maybe not that many. Area. Millions yeah. and thousands, yeah. <laughs> not the height. And the so they just area. run out of the tent, barefoot, scantily clad at best, right? Yep. They, most of them, they have like... Little clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Not like small clothes, but like little amounts of yes, clothes on. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so they're wearing like underwear, t-shirts. Uh, I think at most, one of them had one shoe. Yep. And they just book it a mile away to this forest, right? They just run. Like it's like... Ah! Like, what the heck would have caused these experienced hikers to rip open their tent from the inside and bolt out? And then one by one, they slowly succumb to the overwhelming temperatures and elements of northern Russia. And the crazy thing is, they don't just die, right? One of them is radioactive. One of them does not have a nose and eyeballs. Like, ripped out. One of them, their tongue was removed, but they found blood in their stomach, indicating that maybe this happened while they were still alive. One of them, well, a couple of them have wounds that the coroner said only could have been created by, like, getting hit by a truck. So they weren't just attacked by some people. And then, I know what you're thinking, everybody. 
Well, it's a polar bear. A polar bear did it. There are no other tracks other than the hikers. They're the only tracks found. And wasn't in there the like snow. no like external like damage that was like you know like scratches and like, yeah there's nothing gouges. like that there, well some of them had all, like a couple of them had some gouges like, yeah and like but, crushed chests and like right stuff but a lot like of that. stuff was like yeah internal internal right so the first thought that everybody thought about was an avalanche which is quickly debunked because their tent they left their tent and when it was discovered everything was perfectly intact in their tent the tent was there survived it wasn't like there wasn't there was tons like of snow, snow on, on it. Top of it. The yeah. tracks were still there, so you wouldn't, you know, an avalanche wouldn't have the covered their tracks, yep. right? You would think that would just cover them all up. Mm-hmm. Um, what the holy hell happened to these people? So they talk about this in episode six and seven of the Death by Monsters podcast. And so this podcast is basically a show by these three people who actually are in the game community, which you might have mentioned yeah, that I, to me before, and I, I, didn't I just know completely that. forgot. All three of them, Paula Deming does a show on YouTube. Um, Nick Murphy is one half of the Brothers Murph, who just got picked up by Board Game Geek. They're now Board Game Geek employees. Cool. Congrats. And yeah, that's super <laughs> awesome for them. And then the main guy, uh, the host of the show, is uh, his name is Matthew something or other. I can't remember the last name of this guy. But he is, this is one of the funniest guys ever. Yeah. Have you listened to the show? Yes. This guy is so freaking hilarious. Yeah, I've listened to the first, I think, up through episode six and seven. Yeah, like I okay. started at six and seven, listened to it, was just amazed by the story and... It's hysterical, and the way they talk about things are so funny. And then I'm like, all right, I got to go back and start at the beginning. And yeah, I start at the, the big beginning, foot. Bigfoot, and they talk about um, the guy that jumped out of the plane. And yeah, disappeared. oh, man, so this guy. It's just so, such cool stories oh, that amazing. don't really have a, a great explanation, and they talk through a whole bunch of their explanations and what probably didn't happen, but they <laughs> laugh about it. It's great. Well, because like all these stories that, that they talk about, there's you know because they're not actually solved, there's – you know. A million wild different theories that all these random people have put together as to what happened. You That's know, awesome. like, 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 for instance, the Dietlof Pass that we're talking about. People are like, well, it's aliens, you know, or there's a Yeti. A Yeti <laughs> right. came and just yeah. killed them, you know. And then someone's like, is it, it had to have been a floating magical Yeti because there's no tracks by the supposed mm-hmm. Yeti, you know, or one of the guys that died on the mountain, his watch stopped at like 5 30. Exactly. And if you watch the X Files, that means aliens. And then, and then these people that, like the, the people died at two different times. There was a group that I think was killed first, and then a group that survived a little longer and then died. Yeah. So it's like very weird. And the yeah. people that found it, like their families, were nervous and they went and had to look for it. Right. Because the it government was, was just like, no, we're just going to shut this yeah. down. It's a crazy it is story. Crazy, eerie. It makes you like feel weird in your own skin while you're listening to it and thinking about it. But the the guys at Death by Monsters are so they tell the story so hilariously that yep. it's the most entertaining thing. Ever. That show is so entertaining. So I know all three of you are avid listeners of the Gamecasters, especially now that <laughs> Jeff Caster has joined the Gamecasters. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so kudos to you guys. Go listen to Death by Monsters, everybody listening here. It is hilarious, and the the stories are incredibly. Compelling. Yeah. yeah. Just really, really, really compelling. Such as the force that killed the Dietlof Pass hikers. Yeah. Compelling. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. So that's all I want to talk about with Death by Monsters. Jeff, you had some uh, awesome stuff you did on Instagram I'd like to hear about. I have some awesome stuff I did on Instagram that Ryan wants to hear about. <laughs> uh, I... Uh, so last episode, we talked about why we love board games. That was our discussion. Why yeah. we love board games so much. And we talked for minutes yeah. on this and it was great and we all it were was, a little emotional yeah i think yeah. i was menstruating or something, it was, <laughs> i was like i was like crying my eyes out <laughs> but it was a really cool discussion so i put it on my story on instagram and i said hey um send me a message with your your reason why you love board games and i got a few responses that i want to give some shout outs to and talk yeah. about to people on on the gram and the first one did you do it as a, you did it as a story or did you do it a, did you make a post i did it as a story okay um i think i did it as a story like twice like once right away and then i did it later in the last week gotcha yeah, um, yeah. and got a few responses which was cool and i want to give them a little bit of oh i haven't heard these acknowledgement either. this is exciting yeah these are new yeah so, this is exciting um the first person uh, on instagram is nuclear night 83 oh, i know that someone, guy. yeah that's oh, yeah. his name's peter he has been like and i feel like anything we we always talk on instagram anything we do with like um, Twitch, or he's always yeah, watching. Yeah, borderline he's, stalker. This he's guy. been so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> he's so cool. So he's so nice. Um, and so here's what Nuclear Knight Peter had to say about why he loves board games. Ooh, I can't wait. He says, "I love the human experience of board games. You can see so many emotions: happiness, anger. You can see people in moments of defeat or victory. You can't see people's tell on like a video game. You can't see them grind their teeth." He says, "I love." people 
of board games. Ooh. And I love to watch people be themselves while they play board games. And then he says, as a parent, he loves to watch his children progressively get better and better and watch them start using strategy. And he loves watching just people and his kids play board games. Wow. Which, how cool like is that? Poem. Wow. I'd like to take this opportunity to announce that Nuclear Knight Peter is now a full-time permanent member yeah. of the GameCast. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> yeah. that wow. Cool. That was yeah. amazing. That's, that's a great response. And I thought of, I thought of, uh, of you guys with playing with, um, you know, the kids and like yeah. how how really they've they've come into playing different games yep. and more strategic games and not just mm-hmm. he's right it yeah, is so amazing to i mean it's it's a it's an extension of watching a new player play the hobby but when it's like your own child that you're getting into the hobby i mean what's more narcissistic than that yeah <laughs> you know you are me do what i like it feels so good yeah what what a great response yeah so we got i got two more all right so i have uh jim gamer I think I know Jim Gamer. Which I'm assuming his name's Jim. I'm making the bold that's assumption. A, that's a pretty Jim. big leap, yeah, I think. I mean, so, <laughs> anyway, could be so, Kenneth. <laughs> um, Jim also surrounds his answer around family. He says, it brings my family and friends together in a way that nothing else can. And then he gives an example. He says, and he also talks about his family. He says, point salad has made my six-year-old awesome at math. <laughs> <laughs> really? So See, that's, that's, very cool. I love that kind of stuff. Hearing about how games, you can apply games to education. Yeah. Well, know? it's probably like math that's fun for them. It's not just sitting at school doing a math problem. Right. Right. Ugh, that's awesome. Yeah. Good on you, Jim. And the last one, uh, the beard and board games. Okay. I know that one. Beard yep. and board games. He, he runs a very, very cool page. It's really important to me that I tell you that I know these people yeah. for some reason. <laughs> Wait, I guess. Is it beard or beard? Beard. beard. Like a beard, okay. like facial yep. beard. Yep. <laughs> A facial okay. beard. So facial he says beard. a facial beard. <laughs> it's not, it's oh, not, not an elbow beard. Kind of beard. Other beards, yeah, my shoulder but. beard. <laughs> so he says, for me, board games are not just about the games. Yes, they are a blast to play, but it's the people that you play them with that really makes the experience enjoyable. Board games are very communal, and that, for me, is the most enjoyable aspect of gaming. Amazing. Awesome. Yeah, so shout out to them. Well, it is cool to know that for a lot of people, it's not just about the games. It's more about the community and interacting with your friends and your family that seems to be a pretty common theme yeah in, yeah in, in people's responses right? right and i mean i guess that's a lot of that's true like a lot of, for me personally and and i know jeff uh is is in this camp too we come from a video gaming background mm-hmm. where we play ba- video games primarily yes when we were younger and now that we've gotten into board games that i would say that's the number one difference is you actually get to communicate in a way with, with people in a way that you just totally didn't playing video games unless we're doing like the halo land party yeah but even so <laughs> you know they're mostly solitary yep which is awesome there's nothing wrong with that i don't begrudge bo- video games i still play video games but there is nothing i like doing more than playing board games with because of the people because mm-hmm. i get to hang out with all my best friends and people and maybe that's just a uh, you know you get a little older and you care about that more mm-hmm. you know when you're younger maybe you it. just don't care as much about that yeah. but I don't know. It's fantastic. Those are some great responses. I'm super pumped yeah, about that. It was very cool. Everybody, and I, we've always had such awesome interactions with like the board game community and world on social media, or just like when you go to conventions. Mm-hmm. The, for the most part, everybody is just so welcoming and nice and accepting. What's up with that? So I don't know. Why do we got all these nice jerks? <laughs> Stupid <laughs> jerky, nice, nice people. <laughs> like when we were standing in line, uh, I remember, and I wasn't quite sure Jeff was going to get. Black Angel. Angel. Yeah. And I, you know, hatched this scheme to get the guy in front of me who had just told me that he was just there to browse and he didn't really have anything to buy and they would only let you buy one copy. I was kind of like, I'm, I've just met this guy in line, right? I mean, we've exchanged social security numbers and everything, but of course, but <laughs> outside of the norm, <laughs> I decided to ask him, you know, hey, if I just give you some money, will you buy that game and then just give it to me afterward? And he, without thinking, he was like, sure. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, Maybe that's not the best example of, you know, just welcoming and warmness and kindness. But to me, it was. I was like, this guy doesn't know me. He doesn't have to do this. He could just be like, leave yep. me alone. Like, I want, I'm here by myself. I want to. Yeah, I want to like, experience this on my own. Doing that. Yeah. No, he was just like, sure, of course I'll do that. Why, like, why yeah. wouldn't I do that? Yeah. And that's just the the nature of everybody that we've run into. It's mm-hmm. so cool. I I just recently made a trade on Board Game Geek. I traded Ra the dice game for Crusaders. Oh, sweet. And the guy messaged me, and I had already sent raw like package it away and he sent me a message and he says hey i just took inventory of crusaders and i'm missing a couple pieces so i bought you one on amazon and it's getting shipped to your house oh wow he bought you a brand new game he brought me the brand new copy of the game and i'm like how he could have 
he could have just sent that to me. And not said anything. Whether he, he So first of all, he checked, which is just so nice. That That's he looked weird. through the stuff and went, all right. Because yeah. I don't know if my instinct would be to check because I just assume that everything's no, in the box. Most people don't do that. Right. So he checked and then figured out, okay, I don't have something. And then was nice enough to send me a new copy of the game. Not just send me something with missing pieces and then... Because he could have done that and just been like, oops. Right. So it was just... That's yeah, everybody's really nice. been Everybody's so great. That's fantastic. You guys are great. That, oh my God, we love you. <laughs> Jeff Caster, yay. <laughs> you guys are all permanent members of the show. <laughs> so we don't only talk about super sappy stuff on this podcast. We also talk about board games. Yeah. Right? So there's a couple board games we've been playing recently. And one of, uh, maybe two of them are super hot. Like, ow, ooh, ooh. ouch. And one of them I'd like to talk about is the newest game from North Star Games, designed by famed designer Wolfgang Varsh. The Varsh. Wolfgang Varsh is the hottest designer that's hit the town since Jeremy Germflinger Pete. Yeah, Jeremy. Oh <laughs> <laughs> this guy. I'm still waiting for my Kickstarter shit, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta get you gotta get you back on there, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Wolfgang Varsh, this guy, I mean, what he can do no wrong in the board game. Like, people just love this. Every de- okay, there are few designers I see. You know, he's designed a game, and I'm just like, I'm going to get that game. Yep. Lately, for me, it's been like Alexander Pfister kind of yes. has that thing, like Maracaibo, pre ordered Maracaibo. <laughs> Your boy. Natalie's boy. Her boy. <laughs> She's played one of his games one time. <laughs> That's not true now. We played, um, we just played Mombasa, so you have played yes. too. But but he's kind of in that that realm for me. You know, I see something from Uwe Rosenberg come out, and I'm like, okay, I'm. Yeah, that, my, that's I'm your boy. Out. That's my boy. That's your boy. Right. Yeah. Maybe Stefan Feld. We might mm-hmm. be like, okay, this is a good, this is some yep. good stuff. I'm Wolfgang Bruno, Bruno Varsh, Cathala Bruno Cathala for Jeff. Yeah, that's Jeff's boy. That's your boy. My boy. And Wolfgang Varsh has... Who's the mind guy? Wolfgang Varsh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so let's look. Exactly. So let's t- tell him a couple of his games. So Wolfgang Varsh has designed games at, such as uh, Gans Schoen Clever, which hit the Roll and Write you know, community by storm. And there's been a sh- shite ton of Roll and Writes. You like how I just uh, <laughs> yep. didn't have to bleep Saved myself it. there? Yep. <laughs> there's been a ton of Roll and Writes, and that one has kind of stood above the rest in terms of popularity, right? He's designed The Mind. He's designed Illusion. He's designed The Quacks of Quedlinburg. All these games are nominated for like Spiel and Kenner Spiel des Jahres awards. He designed the 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 hit game Wavelength that's coming out in Kickstarter Ooh, very soon. Wait. Can't wait for that. Yep, I, it's going to be so great. Play that we just Con. did you fill out your yeah yeah shipping address. Stuff? Yep, great. It's coming in very probably oh. in the next month or so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now he has the, also okay. He also designed this game called uh, Doy Dot the Dasket Doll. <laughs> What? No, he the didn't. The Tavernin of oh. Keep Doll. The Bergen Chaberga Bergen Doll. So I see, I see the game, and it's in only in German, and I'm like, ah, uh, this would definitely show up on my, I don't know how to pronounce that list. No clue. Right? So um, it comes out, and I'm like, okay, finally gets an English release. And it's about the exact same name. The Taverns of Tiefenthal. Right? Okay. So this game, uh, yeah. Jeff and I have known about this game for a long time, because it was announced and maybe out in Germany almost right after Quacks. Yeah, came out. I remember looking for it a lot. Yeah, talking. About we saw it. it. We were like, "Oh my god, we we must have this." This looks. It looked amazing. It's got these like things in the board you can like take out. It's got dice drafting. It's got deck building, and it just looked so freaking sweet. So uh, it finally got an English release. Natalie and I picked it up immediately, and we played it three times over the last few days or so. And it kind of feels like Quacks in a weird way, um, because. Qu- while Quacks has that push your luck element of the bag building, the Doi Dot the Dasketal has this <laughs> deck building. It's like push your luck with the deck that building. That can't possibly be what it is. <laughs> it's not <laughs> that. <laughs> it can't be. I've heard him say that before. Okay, say it the Doi Dot the Dasketal is from Doug. That's what I <laughs> like, thought. Like, Doug, like, Doug is doing it. Yeah, yeah, that Doug. Right, All Doug right. Funny. Yeah, so he's doing a ventriloquy funny. act, and he doesn't know how to do ventriloquy, so he has this little book, and it's like, if you want to say a B, just say. D, so your lips don't move. And he's like, so, for instance, the boy bought the basketball oh. would be da doy dot da dasket doll. <laughs> and so then he, like, he has this, like, in his mind, he's, like, in stage, on a stage in front of, like, thousands of people, and he just has a, a dummy, and all he, all, he, all he does is go, da doy dot da dasket doll. and then the audience is like, ah! <laughs> so How I do you remember the lines from Doug? Doll. I'm a weird, weird person. I know. It takes a weird Doug person. Doug is great, though. Yeah, Doug it was is. Patty Mayonnaise. I love yeah. Doug, but Patty I don't the remember Mayonnaise. any episodes and Patty, the mayonnaise for me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. and lines from them. <laughs> Patty, you're the mayonnaise for me. <laughs> you are the nematode that I bagged. <laughs> You're the, ne- you're the nematode to my Mr. Dink. I don't know. Anyway, okay. So, oh, um, the Taverns yeah. of Tiefenthal 
again, it kind of felt like Quacks of Quedlinburg for me in that way. I, I didn't expect it to, but I've heard people say, you know, it kind of feels like a like a variant of Quacks, and it kind of does. Here's the thing. Um, <laughs> I didn't really have a ton of fun playing it. Quacks is far superior in my opinion, and you know my thoughts on Quacks and how frustrated you True. I can get very, very frustrated, right? That's because you're too risky. Yeah, well, maybe. You're a risk taker. Um, so the Taverns of Tiefenthal, uh, what I thought about it, it's got a lot of, th- everything about it seems fun. Like, really fun. I read the rules, and I'm like, this just seems like it's going to be a blast. We played it the first game, and the mechanisms are, you know, playing out, and I'm like, okay, this is this is feeling good. And then I never ascended to that great fun time. And then I'm like, okay. So I'm like, we, well, we played it again right after, because it's fast. With two players, it's very fast. I could see it. I like can see it being, fast, yeah, like, like a half hour fast. fast. Maybe, a, Maybe little a little longer. More, Maybe like yeah, 40 minutes. Not that long. But not long. I can see that time increasing with three to four players, you know, with more players. Mm-hmm. But we played it, and I'm like, let's play it again. He said, okay. We played it again, and it was worse. So here's why. You start with a hand of cards, and you're building your deck. And basically what you do is you're playing cards. Uh, on your turn, all you do is flip a card up. And whatever the card is dictates where it goes on your player board. So if I flip the card up... And it's a, it has a beer on it. It goes next to this beer thing. And then I flip another card, and it has a guy sitting at a table. I put it at the table. And you, you start with three tables. As soon as you flip your third card uh, that has a guy sitting at a table, you stop. So it's kind of push your luck that way. You're not, you're not really pushing your luck. It's just luck, right? Yeah. So if the first three cards you happen to draw are guys sitting at tables, you're going to have a pretty boring turn because you didn't draw any other cards. And you want to draw the other ones. You want because you want to draw as many cards as you want. And here's why: because there's a bunch of different spots on your player board that you're going to take actions with, and these cards that you draw supplement those actions, okay, or help you. So the game is centered around dice. It's a dice drafting game. You take four dice and you roll them, and then you pick one, and then you give that to the player on your left, and then they pick one. So you're just at the end of it, you have four dice to pick these cards like i said supplement your dice in other ways um and help you get more things and do more stuff because there's more dice there's really two currencies in the game it's money and beer and you're yeah. using money uh to buy some cards using beer to buy other cards and get points and it's just a you know get the most points kind of game right, right. it's you're a trying simple to get those nobles or whatever they are yeah yeah so there's these noble that's really cards the and that's point. the whole point yeah draw Think like the the main point score cards in Dominion. You know, there's really you're playing the whole game just to get these gold, these big the or whatever they're called the cards. Yeah, yeah, you're just trying to get these. And so, eh, I don't know how to really even explain. It wasn't very fun. It was very. It got. It felt samey after three plays. Now, granted, there are more modules to play with, and we added a couple of them on in our third play. But it did not change the game enough I for we me. Didn't end up we adding did. Them. Yeah, we did. We added two, but they were like really nothing. They didn't do much. Oh yeah. Remember? Okay. Yeah. So they didn't really add a ton, and as you can tell, Natalie forgot what we even <laughs> how we even added them. And I don't know. It was very lackluster, and I was very disappointed. It was very lackluster for me. What about you, Natalie? What are your thoughts? Um, I remember the first time we played it. I I liked it, and I was wanted to play it again. I didn't want to play it again like, oh, let's give it another shot. Like, I want to play this again right now. And um, the second time we played it, I probably liked it the same um, because I thought it was a good game. You know, I I wanted to try and do better. I wanted to try to manage, like, your my money and my beer better. Um, you She's know, a drunk. She <laughs> drinks all that damn beer. After the, that first, shit. after the first game, I saw, like, kind of what you had to do. You had to, like, like gather up as much beer as you can to get like really good cards or gather up as much money as you can to get really good like money cards or flip over your tiles can i interject one second the problem what? though is you're beholden to these dice so you're yeah, to activate the cards the that you draw th- to activate these cards they have dice on them they have like dice numbers on them so when you when you like i said when you flip those three cards up at the table um when you flip those up they have a number on the cards like it'll say a one a two and a yeah. two and so you activate those cards by placing a dice of one, two, or two on there. But if you roll threes, fours, fives, and sixes, you cannot activate those. Right, you can't even so use you your dice. you just can't do anything yeah, with Yeah, that is, I'd say and, the frust- hmm. most frustrating part is the luck part. You know, if you pull out cards that don't really, like, give you much, then that kind of sucks. And if you roll dice, like a bunch of fours, and you have nowhere to place fours, or you have a bunch of fours, and there's one spot to place a four, and then the rest are just wasted. I mean, that never happened. It For me, a few times I've, was not able to use one dice out of my 
pool of dice, but it still was, you know, it, it was crappy when yeah. that happened. And I think that's the reason that you got frustrated, you know, that things like that kept happening to you. And you're like, I just want to like play my turn and nothing's coming out for me. Nothing's coming out right. Um, but I mean, I liked it the first two times, and I will say the third time, I felt the same as you. I was like, okay, now that this is the third time playing it, it does feel kind of samey. And um, I'm not sure if those modules would change that or not, but I kind of felt like, I'm good. Like, I played this game and I liked it, but I mean, if I had to rate it... (laughs) going on like the ryan james rating scale <laughs> i'd say it's like between medium good, good not great and oh my god <laughs> you were gonna say medium <laughs> no i was wrote i wrote between good not great and great so medium great <laughs> <laughs> yeah for me medium it great. gets a, it gets a pretty solid good not great which is a seven <laughs> and the reason it gets that high um is is because i think that the game is designed fine I don't think it's broken oh, in yeah. any way. I it's, did it, like it. I, I think they're. I wish they would have done something where you could just place any die anywhere. Like they had one space. It didn't give you that much. But if you just rolled crappily, like Natalie talked about, you have a four. There should be there should be a space on the board where you can put any die and just get like one coin. Yeah, there's well, a space there that does that, there's but you can only for, put one die there. Right, you so can't there's put like any a, die, any a space of dice you want. for you can put any die to get a coin, a space you can put any die to get a beer. But if you've used those two spaces up and you still have dice you can't use. Well, then, too bad. Yeah, we had a couple turns where we both rolled, like, five fours. <laughs> right. well, that, that can't happen. We both rolled, like, three fours. So there's six of the eight dice are four. And, and we like, had cool. no... Neither of us had any these? cards yeah. or any... I mean, your, are... your player board doesn't have anything to put a four. So you have to have mm-hmm. cards. But you don't... Your yeah. starting hand, there's no cards that right. activate on a four. So you have to buy those. And so we didn't have any anything. So we're like, okay, what? Are, this turn's terrible. Right. And then there's those cards that will let you um, change... Like a dice value, what is it? Up one? Yeah, but you can't ever go down. But yeah, but like hmm. all of like the the pedest like the customer cards are like ones and twos, or you know, a bunch of the other cards are really low. And so when you roll a bunch of fours and you only have you can add one, that doesn't, yeah, help, doesn't you help you at all. Still, can you wrap like can you go no. from six to one? Mm-mm. Right. So if it was like plus one minus one, that could be better, maybe. Yeah, or if you could wrap, that would be nice. Or but if no, you could wrap, yeah, you can't. Yeah. Do it. So it wasn't bad. But those things, those We're things that we talked about, just knocked it down to yeah. just like, I would rather play Quacks Quedlinburg. Yeah, That's like I, I liked it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if you, for well, sure. I know Quacks is like one of your favorite yeah. games ever. <laughs> yeah. I, and I feel like in Quacks, there's, a, there's ways to like, you're adding stuff to your bag. Like, yes, the luck is, is still obviously there, mm-hmm. but at least you're adding stuff and you can... You know, combo some cool things in Quacks. Right. And, yeah, and I'll you say still that, those infuriating. I mean, you are that adding is cards. There. That is there because instead of the bag building, you're adding cards. You're buying cards and adding them to your deck. Okay. So, and the cool thing about this mechanism, when you when you buy a card, it goes right on the top of your deck. So you so know you're you, going to pull it comes it out next. right the yeah. next yeah, turn. However, cool. when you buy those really awesome cards that win you the game, those are people seated at tables. So those go on top of your deck. Say you buy two of those. The first two cards you draw are those two guys, mm-hmm. and now half your turns. And over. unless you have extra chairs that you purchase, extra They're, chair cards, you know that's yeah, that's two of the three things that'll end your round. Now, don't get me wrong; there are turns. There are some I was turns say, I had where you're like, awesome "Oh, this was a great turn. turn! I lucked into drawing six cards that I get to use this turn. Like, oh, I can't wait to pull this off." And there, that did happen. So it wasn't do- completely devoid of that, but mm-hmm. in Quacks. You're constantly doing that every turn, and every turn you're like, okay, I could just not draw these. But you won't have that in Taverns of Tiefenthal. You're always going to get those crappy ones. Okay. And kind of point. like in Quacks, too, where you have um, that like potion thing. Yeah. Where yeah, you do have that. In yeah, the, so okay. there's like a, there's like a couple ways. Like put the card back. Kind of right. Thing. Like you like draw cards, and then you if you put them all back, you can like start over if you get rid of this little Yeah, so token. say you draw three of those you know, table cards, like, but your deck is worst. huge. You have so many. You're like, oh my God, now my turn's ruined. You can spend this token and then you discard those and then draw again. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I did that once where like I had a crappy round. I discarded the token and then I like drew like everything round. in the world. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, this is awesome. So yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, get it. Yeah, confused. it was fun. It was a good game. Yeah. yeah. I just, I don't, I, I don't really want to play it again. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was cool I'm too, like it. trying to figure out like at the end what can I do? How many of these things can I... So, like, there's pieces of the board that 
come out of the board and when you um pay like a certain amount of money you can flip it over and every time you flip it over to like cool. the upgrade side it gives you one of those nobles which is the, basically the way you win the game and get the most of your points and so i thought it was fun like figuring out ways to flip those over yes and then they give you upgrades too to help you maybe um, this was only prevalent in a two-player game but in all three games we played the scores were so close yeah they were very close and I, honestly i don't know that i liked that Mm-hmm. because it felt like and that that might be part of why people are saying it's so samey it just feels on rails like is this going to happen every every play where it yeah, feels like Na- okay i see okay natalie had one really great turn and i'm like okay that that turn will probably win it for her and likewise i had one where i had this great turn that one little turn won it otherwise our turns were very very yeah, so similar. did we we end up both like all the games did we get the I same wanted, amount of nobles and it was just like our extra stuff that well, or one it? of us had one more noble than the other oh okay that was all it was never like i had six nobles yeah. you had three yeah. and so like i win completely you know yeah so based on what i'm what i'm hearing and, and compare it because it's got to be compared with quacks because yeah the varsh did it varsh is that I, I feel like when i play quacks and i what i'm hearing from you is that like the highs in quacks are so incredible so much yeah. better like when you pull that pull the emit like you're just pulling you're like you're getting at 20 25 and you're just like comboing and you get to push stuff and it's just the greatness is happening in quacks when the lows happen at least you have that moment of like the high is so much better and i feel like I, what i heard from you is that yeah the high is not there to counteract some of the boring completely parts. true also what's better about quacks is in, in Taverns of Tiefenthal, I don't think you have the fear like you do in Quacks, which adds to the awesomeness of Quacks. When you have six or seven cherry bombs in Quacks, and you're like, you reach yep, into that bag and you're like, yeah. okay, there's 14 chips in here. Only one of them can blow me up. Yeah. But it's like, oh gosh, what do I do? I don't know what to do. That doesn't happen in, in Dodoy Dot to Daskadol <laughs> because in, in that game, it's not so horrible if you quote unquote bust it's just more annoying it's more okay. just like oh darn because in quacks when you bust there's an actual real consequence yeah right you can only either score points or buy right and that hurts in in the <laughs> <laughs> in, of- in taverns of tiefenthal when you quote unquote bust by just you know filling up your tables you just can't do quite as much it's not you don't get completely hurt like, it's not like, now there's something I cannot do that Natalie can't. It's okay. more just like, this happened to me this turn. It's going to probably happen to her next turn. There's always a situation where one person's going to have those turns. And so it just doesn't, like you, like, almost exactly like you said, it's more middle of the road. You don't have those highs or the lows. And honestly, the lows make the highs better. Yeah. And they make it more exciting. And you don't have that ex- level of excitement, I think, personally, in that game so that's it that's the taverns of tiefenthal um north star games check it out i, I mean I, i'm not gonna just not recommend it because plenty of people like it it's a, it's not a bad game i think if you were going to wolfgang varch's catalog and you wanted to buy one of his bigger games i think quacks of quedlinburg is by far the one to go for i would like to play taverns i haven't played it i want to take it home with you today okay if you like it it's yours right if you, do, right. Yeah, if well, you don't yeah i would like to try it because yeah. it seems if you don't give it back and i'll sell it all right. Yeah, it's something that I would like to try because I like the Varsh. Yeah, Varsh. And I like everything he really puts out. So Yeah, I, I can see you liking it. Yeah. I can see you completely liking it. And I, I, I'm not trying to color your you know opinion of it, but that's just how we felt. Yeah, so. and it's got to sit. It, what's hard about some games is it has to sit against other games that he's made. And if it doesn't compare yeah, to Quacks in that it? way, I, if I'm going to pick Quacks every single time... Is that game going to stay in the course? Truly, I think you will. Yeah. I don't know that it does enough try it. different. Yeah, try I'll it. go in fresh mind. Like I said, take it home and, and, and uh, try yeah. it on. <laughs> See how it looks in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was Taverns of Tiefenthal. Jeff, what about you, man? You uh, you had some, some game night, board game club stuff going on? Yeah, so what's going on in board game club world? Let's tell you. So right. can't wait. We, the board game club has met with now our Missouri people at Brittany Woods Middle School. No, no, no. Missouri. Missouri. She hates that. She does? Yes. Oh, Why? No. So it's funny. So um, I don't Lydia, care. Miss Waymeyer. This is my Ms. Waymeyer, <laughs> She sends me this message and she's like, the episode's great. It's cool. You're talking about board game club. And she's like, but that Missouri thing. I'm like, I'm like, do people actually call it Missouri? She's like, yeah. And like rural Missouri, people call it Missouri. And she's like, I just cringe every time. Wow. But she's like, in a funny way. 
it's like not like she's like not gonna listen yeah yeah, yeah 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 well it was just funny because she was like, i just want to tell you right now i don't know if i can stop myself i'm gonna try you know because we Mizzouro. want to respect our listeners but i'm gonna i'm gonna try my hardest <laughs> Missouri, Missouri, Missouri. i'm getting out of my system Missouri, <laughs> Missouri, Missouri. okay missouri let's go let's and go. so the, if, if you remember the last time we played medium and medium was cool except everybody was so terrible at it that we we decided to try something else and we played just one between um redford michigan and that's a good university one. city university city missouri missouri <laughs> and so the way we did it is we had so the card so if you've ever played just one you have the card faces away from you you pick a number and everybody writes on a little whiteboard a word to try to get you to guess the word that you can't see so we had the word facing us and through skype they picked one of the numbers and everybody on our side wrote down the word on their whiteboard Got and it. showed it and then put the ones down and then held up the whiteboards to the camera for their entire class to guess. guess. Okay. And cool. then we switched. So then our group yeah. picked. So it kind of was like teams. Yeah. Did it go a little better than medium? It was great. <laughs> yeah. It went, I, it went much better than medium in terms of like success. They, so what do they have to do? They have to vote as a class? Like, I think it's yeah, this. Yeah. They kind of were like, what do you think about this? And, and a lot of them would say the right answer. And then when they said, you know, they came up with an answer, it was either right or wrong. But it was, yeah. it's cool because somebody was like, oh, I said that. And it's like in the background, but yeah. um, it it went it went great, and I th- they were more successful, which I think always goes better, especially with like younger kids. You always right. want them to be more successful at the game so they can like it and come back. Right, and it, it was awesome. We we were gonna try to play something this past Friday. Um, it didn't work out. Timing didn't didn't work, and we're hoping for code names next. Yeah, nice. Uh, we're also chatting about they they've come out with some of these like choose your own adventure based on like the books they come out with like now board games where you're kind of like reading through cards. Yep. I think that would be a cool sure. thing to, to maybe do back and forth. Mm-hmm. It's like storytelling. And yeah, and I'm curious um, what else we can kind of play. But just one went really well. I hope code names will go really well. So that's what's going on. That's super cool. That is really board cool. game club. Uh, I also spoke to someone on Instagram. I'm forgetting his Instagram name, but his real name is Nestor. Nestor. And he is in Miami and he kind of reached out to me and said how cool it was that I was communicating with Lydia and we were playing games and hopefully maybe we can work something out. Um, is he a Nestor teacher as well? Yeah. Wow. Maybe with his his students as well, so we can do. Yeah, that'd be great. Interesting. Anyway, super cool. They've played also. They got they got to play Deep Blue, which we talked about oh, nice. last episode. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. loved it and they had so much fun. They basically like they took a completely different strategy. They were very friendly to each other. They kept like buying cards. They wanted to buy all the cards and then have like the oh. most gigantic. Oh. Uh, and then they started dive. diving. Yeah. So, they so that had, must like, have taken forever. Um, yeah. Oh, they had like hundreds and hundreds of points because wow. they just had they had all the cards and they were just like, yeah, we, we didn't just dive and they were like cards. playing it. Yeah. We just went through and like end this thing. Yeah. Um, and the last game. So the game that we'll spend a little more time talking about is um, a game by Blue Orange uh, called Detective Club. Yep. And Detective Club I got at Gen Con. Mm-hmm. And what's great about Blue Orange at Gen Con is if you buy two games, they give you a little discount. <laughs> <laughs> With no coercion at yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> and Detective Club is uh, its a game where you are a group of detectives and you're trying to figure out which one in your group is the conspirator. Mm-hmm. So it's a social deduction game. And everyone starts with a hand of cards that look very similar to that of Dixit or Mysterium. Incredible art. Um, I forget the, the team that designed it, but it's, it's the art's so cool. And yeah. it, you've played those two games, so you mm-hmm. see how cool the art is. And then everybody gets an um, opportunity to be like the person that is the start player. And, th- and they choose a word. And they look at their hand and they pick a word based on the cards in their hand. And they write it down on a small pad of paper for every single person except one. So there's like seven pads of paper. You write down the word on six of those. You shuffle those up and you hand it out. So everybody at the table knows the word except one person. That person is the conspirator. Everyone at the table is trying to figure out who that person is. The person who chose the word picks the card first and puts it in front of them. Doesn't say anything, just lays the card down. Then it goes around person by person playing a card that they would associate with the word that they know. So right. everyone now has two cards in front of them. So you do it once, and then you do it again, and everybody has two cards. Which I like, because if if you are the person who doesn't know what the word is, you at least get to see... You see something. ...what everybody's put down, so you can kind of make an educated guess. Yes. I like that. You at least see one card, 
even if you're you know if you're next in line yeah. to the bird you at least see one card so then two cards go around and then you, you might have a better card for your second one so you put that down and then once it gets back around the person who chose the word gets to tell a story so they they say what the word is so the word is water and they get to tell a story for each card why they chose it so i picked this card because you see waters in the background and then i picked this card because it's blue and there's a fish and on everyone's it, like blah, blah, blah. bullshit you're yeah. lying what the hell everyone your like okay yeah. and then everybody goes around the table explaining why they picked their two cards and then at the end everyone has like a tiny little wooden magnifying glass and they put it near the person who they think is a conspirator and you get points if you identify the conspirator the conspirator gets points if they blend in and that's the whole game yep. you play once around the table everybody gets to pick the word and it's fun. There's, I, I really enjoy the storytelling part of it. The kids were hilarious <laughs> telling these stories about like, yeah, coming up with creative ways yeah. to Well, when to the lie. earth turns and the moon shines over here, it's the tides of this. And it was just so fun to hear them tell the story. And in comparison to games, so, it, you know, it's like an insider or chameleon or Spyfall. Yep. Those games where you're just trying to blend in and yep. you don't know something. Or um, the, New York one. Yeah, yeah fake artist. Fake art. I'm yeah. like, what the heck is that called? Yeah. yeah. And so I like this game better because you can, if you're the conspirator, if you're the person that doesn't know the word, you have an opportunity to actually blend in better. In Spyfall, if you get a question for that card that's like, hey, where are we located? And you're first, you're screwed. Like people yeah. are going to know you're it right away. Mm -hmm. But in this, the person who wrote the word down has to tell the story first. So they say the word is water. And if I'm the conspirator, I'm like, okay, how can I make these cards in front of me? Make it look like I knew what the word is. Right. And completely BS this story. And you can you can do well by just being a good storyteller, which is right. very cool. And yes. you could also get lucky because you might not know the word and happen to have water cards. And someone who knew the word doesn't have like, yep. good water cards. You're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me at Gen Con. So mm -hmm. at Gen Con, I was the conspirator. And I think it might have been water. I think it was. I, I think, think that, it was that might be the example. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I had pretty good cards in my hand for water. All I saw was everyone was putting stuff that was blue out there. And I was like, okay, it's probably water. I got blue. <laughs> and so I did. And I, I can't remember. I think Joe, I don't remember who it was. Somebody got, didn't have the right cards. And, you know, and he couldn't come up with like, um, I, uh, well, uh, yeah. you know, in the, in the picture. And so they were like, what? It's him. <laughs> you know, and of course I did a little of my own. It's you yep. <laughs> kind of stuff. But you're right. I agree with you 100%. My biggest problem with games like Spyfall, Chameleon, and Fake Artist are I do not like being the player who has no information and then I'm on the spot to come up with the information based on absolutely nothing. So in Fake Artist, I'm the first person that's, that has to go. I have nothing. To, I don't know what to draw. Right. How the heck am I supposed to blend in? Drawing a line. So that can, yeah. yeah. If you don't draw a line, or even if you do that, you're. it's like, okay, now it's boring. If I'm the first person, you the first person always draws a line. <sighs> So I like that Detective Club has come and found a way around that problem that is prevalent yeah. in all three of those and, and games like that, where there's one person who has no information. I love that they get the information, and now it's on them to defend yep. why they made the decisions they made before they knew what the information was. That is so much cooler. Yeah, it, it worked great. The kids really liked it. They've asked for it to come back and play it again, and I'll, I'll keep playing it. It's something that I would also play with like a bigger group of adults. It's it's cool for kids and I, I would recommend like it for Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would recommend it like I would say it's like someone twelve years old up could play. Sure. And the high school kids got really into it. I have a, a lot of um kids who are also like in drama and in like the drama program and plays. So they got into like even standing up and like this is why this card is and it was it was very cool to see <laughs> to them watch just that play. And, get and into that's it. all they played. Um, it was a few weeks ago. That's all they played. That seems like so, that kind of game is yeah. right up this kid's alley. Yeah. yeah. They like the social... I mean, how... They don't they, don't you say they still play the Resistance? They still play Avalon. still play Resistance. They they even played Chameleon two days ago on Friday. Wow. They they love those social deduction games so because cool. they like being with their friends and mm -hmm. playing those games right. with their friends. Yep. Yeah. That and age, it's a great one. Being with your friends is like the most important thing The only thing, thing you want to do. Yep. <laughs> and then you get to be the funny one in the group and then everyone likes yep. that. You yeah. know, so that's awesome. So that's <laughs> Detective cool. Club. Yeah. Sweet. Um, so I'll talk very, very briefly about a, a solo game that I that I got on Kickstarter called Maki. That was another game I had no idea how to pronounce. It's spelled M A Q U I S. Maqua. Maquise. Maqua. So it's Maki. <laughs> I'm guessing it's French. A Francais. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> there's that Simpsons episode where <laughs> there's a somebody makes a joke in French class. 
<laughs> and they, everyone laughs like ha ah, ha ha and teacher's like en français and they're like oh, 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 oh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so maki is a a unique animal because it is a solo only worker placement uh game which is weird 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 rare yeah very rare worker placement is not something you typically see in a, a solo game there's solo variants of some worker placement games but this one is specifically a solo game in design so it only plays one only one and this was a reprint i think that it was originally designed six years ago and it was like a, a pnp only you could just print it off and play the files and so it was actually got picked up in, in um uh it was published so i just came on kickstarter and it's by side room games i don't remember the designer but it is a very cool very cool game so basically it's so simple basically you have a map of uh i don't know if it's europe or whatever it is okay natalie got it for me here thank you the designer is jake stains (laughs) yeah jake stains okay jake stains from side room games and so basically what you do is you play you have three workers you play a worker and then you draw a card and the card is basically the the AI's worker. So it's basically like you're playing a two player worker placement game and you're just drawing a card for the AI. And so you're essentially taking actions from these spaces on the board and the game is coming out taking other actions, you know, take both one taking spots that you want to take and it's also if you can't ever draw a line back to the home base from where your worker is because one of these other workers is in your way, then that worker gets arrested and removed from the game. And if ever your workers are all removed from the game, you lose. Um, there's a couple other ways to lose as well. The, the way to win is you just have to complete these two mission cards. And that's it. It's super simple, super quick. I mean, it's it's like it plays in, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes. And maybe that's... Oh, that's cool. You know, it's very, very fast. And that, that drew me to it. It plays really quickly. A worker placement is a fantastic mechanism I, that I enjoy that, you know, most people I would say enjoy. And I'm always looking for, you know, if... I don't I, I don't play solo that often, but I'm always looking for a solo game to grab me. You know, like a few have Friday from Freedom and Freeze. I love playing Too Many Bones, uh, but that, those games are just bigger. You know, I mean, fr- Friday's not bigger, but Maki is. Yeah, and Clouds by those are good solo games, but Maki is a really quick uh, and fast and simple worker placement game that's very, very, very difficult and challenging to win, which is another thing that you want. So, very cool game. That's Maki by Side Room Games. Yeah, I just read the theme. It seems pretty cool. You're like trying to rid France of the Nazi France. Yeah. That's pretty right. cool. So, yeah, it's very cool. Do you feel it in the game or not? Like, yes. Yes, cool. because so that's that's how you get uh, removed from the game is you're like trying to like kind of like sneak around, spy around and, and get these resources to do these missions. And then the police are basically trying to capture you. Now, there it's it's pretty random. I'll say this because the, because there's a deck of cards and the card flip is where the enemy's workers, the game's AI is placed. So could just be in the wrong place. You can time. that and that happens a lot. You're just in the wrong place around that. But as you play more, and I've played a couple times now, you see little ways to mitigate that. At first, when I played the first time, I was like, this is just a random nightmare. It, <laughs> if you don't win after the 15th turn, you that's another way to lose. And I was on turn five and I lost. And I was like, so it wasn't it wasn't even five minutes. Oh, I was wow. like, this sucks. Like this isn't fun. And then I kept playing it. And I was like, oh, if I would have just done this, the little tiny ways to manipulate cool. the game. And so it kind of brings out like nuances that weren't there so very cool game maki maki yeah i like maki nice we also got another game that was my most anticipated game from gen con and it oh it, it was i thought it was available at first but it was just a demo oh yeah and so i pre-ordered I it, it there and it's called mechanica and this is by the same people who did visitor from blackwood grove uh which i still haven't played yet but same same publishing house design team and this is a very interesting game where you basically have a, your own player board and you have these little little robots. And basically what you're doing is you're creating these robots and then you're sending them through your player board uh, off to trucks to ship them out to people. <laughs> so you're like creating these robots and that, that are useful in, in the world, right? But the cool thing about it is you start with these little robots, which are only worth a couple dollars and they don't really do much for you. But there's these midweight robots that are like bigger, you know, point value. And then there's these big robots that are like the biggest money in point value. And the way to get those robots is to basically turn the little robots you have into them. And you do that by way of these puzzle pieces. You're putting puzzle pieces on your player board and you're interlocking them in these different ways to basically um, 
move the direction of these conveyor belts, which is where your, your robots go to. So at the beginning of your turn, you just take your robot that's at the left of your player board and you move it along the conveyor belt and it, it'll just get, it'll go as far as it can until it stops. And it stops when it reaches a puzzle piece that has like a cool ability in it, or it'll stop when it reaches a truck to sell it. And it's, it's, this game is really interesting. And unlike uh, pretty much any game I've played before, wouldn't you agree yeah, there, would. Natalie? What do you think about Mechanica? Um, well, I had a slightly frustrating first play of it because I placed um, puzzle pieces in spots that didn't, like, when I tried to place other puzzle pieces, like, nothing was, like, kind of flowing correctly the way I had it set up. Um, so I definitely would, I definitely want to try again and maybe do better, but I can totally see how if you had like a good flow and a good setup going, how it would be so awesome and like feel so great. And I think that my favorite part of the game is like you said, that it's really unique and different and interesting, um, in the way that you're like building your own like engine engine, I guess. And, and trying to like um output as many of these robots as possible to get as many points as possible and then even just the way that you get the puzzle pieces by turning um that little dial that little dial and like you can you know if if it falls in the hole it recycles it recycles and it's just it's just really different and interesting do you remember you remember palaces of carrara yes it's got that resource wheel yeah I love so it, yeah you turn you put these resources on this wheel and then the the amount of money it costs to get these resources depends on where it is in the wheel and when you turn the wheel they uh, gradually get cheaper this this game has a very similar thing you're basically it's a tile placement game at its heart you're playing yeah. these puzzle pieces those are your tiles onto your board interconnecting them in different ways kind of like carcassonne almost where you're trying to connect them to you know in a certain way that makes sense that gives you the most points and the way you get these puzzle pieces is they're on this wheel and so you might see this piece that's like oh this piece is a duplicator and if i put this here whenever my little robot goes onto it it'll create two of itself and then if i put another piece next to it that's an upgrader those two robots will now turn into the two big ones and so you have to put them next to each other in that way but you're taking the pieces off of this resource wheel that spins just like palaces of carrara and so you might be like okay this one i want this so bad but it costs seven dollars and that's my that's all of my money and so oh, I have to, you know, hopefully wait a couple turns. At the end of your turn, you you rotate the wheel. Okay. And so, you know, it can get all the way to only $1. And then it gets um, thrown away. And then, like it, yeah, and then the the, and when it goes, gone. yeah, when it, it goes again, it just falls, it falls in into hole, this into hole. Into oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. Yeah, but, another cool thing is that the box is basically like the part of the game. The tray that holds everything. That you're not like using on your player board. Yeah, if we took it out to play it right now, it is set up. Yeah, it's really cool. All I do is I give you your player board and then the game's ready to go. That that is I was gonna talk about that too. That is one of the coolest things about the game. Mm-hmm. You you basically set it up for the next play at the end of your current play. So we played it the first time, and at the That's end cool. of it, it's like, okay, here's the end That's of your game. Idea. Here's what you do. You shuffle this deck, you do this, you do this, and now you're ready for the next game. And so we could literally just take it off, take the board, take the, the box lid off. Give each other a player board and, you know, our starting resource, which is a couple dollars and then yeah. one of those little robots. And then, boom, you're ready to go. It's so, it's yeah, super cool. cool. It's super cool. So I really like it a lot. I want to play it again. I, I, love I, th- I think it. you would Seems enjoy it. Cool. Yeah, I think you'd enjoy it a lot. Um, engine building, kind of tile mm-hmm. placement, kind of like figure out how to do the best with what you got kind of game. Yeah. And it's over pretty quickly. So I'm going to give this one, if I had to rate it, I'm probably going to give it uh, an eight off my first play. Cool. Um, I'd probably give it 7.5, but. It will probably yeah well because you didn't have the I think, best yeah play, and I think right? another thing I realized at the end too was I didn't know what tiles um, were out there and so I was just at the beginning grabbing them not knowing like whether yeah. where I should put it what what it could just, fit to because I didn't know what other tiles were in the game you'll so learn at the that. end I was like oh okay I, next time I would play this differently because I know what I could possibly absolutely put together once you, know? you play more yeah. it's just stuff like that first game is always that kind of learning experience right, right. Like absolutely what's in the what's in the box mm-hmm. right so yeah that's Mechanica very very cool yeah it was cool yeah how about you Jeff anything else you've been playing yeah I played uh, a game called Mental Blocks. Which, oh, yeah. um, shout out to Pandasaurus Games. Pandasaurus. I won this game on an Instagram contest. That's so giveaway, cool. Giveaway, which That's is so cool. super cool. That is cool. I just, so I tagged um, my brother Dave in it. and Oh, he won we, too, didn't he? Yeah, so we played it at uh, Gen Con and we played an oversized version of it. Right. It's got a bunch of blocks in it and we played an oversized version of it. We both really liked it. We didn't buy it at Gen Con and then I saw that Pandasaurus was doing a giveaway. I tagged him in it. 
and they picked my name and they gave it to me as well as the person I tagged. So me and oh, Dave cool. now have a copy so of cool. Mental Blocks, which is very cool. So thanks, Pandasaurus. And the way the game is, is uh, there's a bunch of just foam blocks. Uh, they're triangular triangular prisms. Would that be right? Uh, oh, they're foam in, in the regular game too? Yes. I thought the foam was just for the oversized the, oh, game. No, it was, it's, yeah, it's the foam. Oh, so it's cool. like a hard foam. So they're, they're triangles, rectangles, squares, all in like prism forms. And then there's bigger ones and small ones. So there's two different sizes and then four or so different shapes. And you're working cooperatively and everybody gets a card that has one side of the structure that you have to build as a team. Oh, it's like a three-dimensional structure. Yes. You only see yep. one 2D side. So if side. there's four mm -hmm. people playing, which is what we played with, um, a, we played four or five times, but that's what... A, you're making one structure and each person has one of the sides, not oh, top cool. or bottom. And so you're saying like, my side looks like this, but their side looks like that. And you're trying to like maybe move around the table to figure out what side's yours. And because if you orient yourself in the right way, it makes it a lot easier. And you get 10 minutes to do that. And it's really fun. Like you're working, I love the the spatialness of it. But what I like most is that it's spatial and I don't have to do it all by myself. Yeah. Because I am terrible at, spa if I had to make that thing by myself and I just got all four sides and I'm trying to figure it out, it would be boring and I would hate it. I worry that I would be bad. Yeah. Even when a four player game, I worry that I would like, I'm not contributing much. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, I remember playing, I played it at Gen Con too. Mm -hmm. and, I, and it was hard because... Because what you see is deceiving to you because you only see one side and there could be like, it could be like five different pieces that you're looking at based on what only what you're seeing because you don't know what's on the other side of it, what it looks like sideways. And I remember like when we figured it out, it was like an awesome feeling. Was, like, yeah. oh yeah, that makes sense. It was okay. very cool. Yeah. And the, the game comes with like a th 30 different, like what they call family scenarios. And then on the back of all of those cards are 30 different challenging scenarios. So there's like 60 times you can play the game. Wow. It also expands all the way up to nine people. Oh, so wow. if you play with four, which seems right now that's my favorite because everyone just gets a side and you're kind of a smaller group. If you play with more people, you will get a an overview of the structure, but you won't get any colors. So the blocks come in four different colors. And they'll get an overview and be like, well, it looks like this from the top, but I don't know what color the blocks are. I like the idea of just the four people trying to make that that one structure. And that that's four more. And then if you get to a ninth player, there's actually, you can add in a, like a trader, a saboteur Ooh. who knows the answer and is trying to stop people from making it. What? Oh, um, that seems and there's also some pretty cool variants. Like you can have little um, restrictions so you can get your side. So I see my one side and you can also get a restriction that says I can only touch triangular blocks, which we played at Gen Con. Yeah. If you remember, we're all like right. picking up a triangle block and flipping the square ones around to try to move right, them. That's right. Or you can't talk or you can only touch small blocks. Um, it's, it's fun. It was very cool. It's very light. I think it's a cool family game. Did you um, um, play it at uh boring club? Yes, I played it. That's, that's all I've played it at is with, the kids the at board game club and they obviously love it yeah they liked it and it's also cool that, like they're they're thinking and they're yeah mm -hmm. they're doing a good job at thinking and trying to like yeah. spatially See, figure a game, it out a game like that i feel like is a really good tool for education yeah mm -hmm. it seems like i could really you know mentally acrobatically what other word can end in ly that i could throw in there lovingly platonically <laughs> uh, is this mad is this mad mad lives <laughs> yeah, again right. yeah right, right. uh <clears throat> that seems super cool yeah. awesome so that's mental blocks mm-hmm Natalie, do you have any other games you want to talk about before we launch into our amazing topic for the week? Yeah, let's talk about Code 777. Code 7. Oh, 7. I played this. 7. We just played it last night. So I got the new version. Well, You got it from like China or something? No, it came from Korea. Oh, Korea. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And Heather was like, North or South Korea? <laughs> Did she say that? Yeah. And I was like, good question. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, so Code 7. 7. Seven <laughs> is a uh, is a it's a deduction game, and it's been out for a long time. And Bill, a buddy that we talk about all the time, that Jeff play games with, plays games with still all the time, owns this. And uh, for the longest time, uh, you know, it was out of print, so you couldn't really find it. So when I kind of went away from that that group because I moved out to commerce or to a different city, that was one of the games I always wanted to get back because it was a really fun game. Not only did I want to get it back because I loved it. But Natalie's favorite thing in the world is deduction. 
She loves deduction. You've heard us talk about how much she loves Mastermind and games like that all the time. She likes Alchemists a lot. There's a lot of puzzles in Mansions of Madness that have deduction that she loves. And so Code 777 is at its heart a deductive experience. That's like what the game is. You basically have a bunch of tiles. And okay, so everybody has a rack in front of them that will hold these tiles. And there's three tiles. The tiles are just numbers and colors. That's what they are. Um, So you put three tiles on your rack. The trick is you can't see your tiles you can see everyone else's and so you are by way of deduction trying to figure out which tiles you have if you do that three times you win the game okay that's all you do and so the whole game is basically um you know i see everybody else's numbers and let and and colors and so i'm just crossing those off on my little dry erase board that i have because the new version jeff has this it's like a cool dry erase thing so it's not just like you know paper oh, now this is yeah the paper the other version? the other one was yeah it was paper yeah i think so this one is a is all dry erase which is it was it's better cool. it's better yeah. so um on your turn all you do is you draw a card and the card will have a question on it and you ask the question to uh, uh, i'm sorry you read the question and then answer it and so then everyone else that hears the answer gets more information on what their numbers is uh, are so for instance the question might say do you see more yellow sevens or blue sixes and so then I answer, so if, I, if I pick that card, I answer that based on what I see. So, for instance, if Jeff has uh, one yellow seven, Natalie has two pink sixes, and then the other player doesn't have anything, I might say, I see more pink sixes. So that helps everybody out there. Natalie's like, well, I see one yellow seven. That must mean that I have two pink sixes if he sees more. And then Jeff, you know, similarly, well, I guess that doesn't, he might think, Actually, he might not learn much there. I probably right? wouldn't learn much, yeah. but yeah, that would but, help. But that Natalie would definitely help now. Yeah. Yep. That would definitely help now. So that's an example of how you know it helps. So, but it doesn't help the person reading the card at all, right? Because they already have all the information that they're answering on, mm-hmm. right? So then you know that's all that happens. And then whenever you think you know what you got, you just stop the game and you're like, I think I, I think I got it. And then you say the numbers that you have, and you're either right or wrong. If you're right, you get to look at your numbers and see the colors and then cross those off to, you know, help you for the next set. You, If you're wrong, you just don't get to see them and it sucks. And you just like put them to the side uh, and then you draw three more from the center. And you just, again, you just go round and round until somebody gets three correct guesses. And so that's the game. And it is super good. I like it a lot. Um I again, I, I really, I'm really interested to hear Natalie's thoughts on this one because I bought it with her in mind because she loved deduction. Yeah. So we played it last night. And just the two of you? No, it was we had Brian and Heather over. Oh, great. And so the four of us played. Yeah. And Natalie, tell us how you did and what you thought. Um, well, because I love deduction, I actually did love this game, but I did so bad. Uh, I think I got like a little cocky because every time <laughs> every time I like thought I I was like, got it. I was like, I'm gonna guess. And I probably guessed four or five times, got them wrong every, <laughs> every single time. time. And I was I the only one. one who had zero when the uh, game ended. <laughs> But it was still really fun. Like, I was, like, determined. Like, when it was over, I was like, that's fun. I want to play it again. I don't want to do better. But I, you know. Yeah, we moved it was on long to another game. And, yeah, but. we played other games. But I want to play it more really badly. And one Because I did like it. I would, I think I know what I did wrong. And I think I was just a little too, like, sure of myself. And I was just <laughs> <laughs> kind of wrong every time. Get off your freaking high So I never there, got to even Natalie. see my tiles. Natalanga's caster. Yeah, that's we, so funny. We recently played this game, too. And I think... Natalie, someone that would sympathize you with you is Joe. Deep, <laughs> Deepwater Joe. Deepwater Joe. Me, Bill, and Joe played that game, and Joe was just miserable. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe, and you know it. Uh, and he know, oh, he's know. like, I don't understand why I did so poorly at this game. But And, and one thing, when, when you're wrong, not only do you not get to see your numbers, but now everybody else gets to see more three more numbers because you draw them from yeah. the you're pile like and you're like, cool, over. so you got them wrong and now yep. I get to cross three more What a more great candidate my... for this game makes me feel stupid. At, Joe <laughs> yeah. said that that would be on his list. After one play, he was like, that was rough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can see. So I had a great, conversely from Natalie, yeah. I had an amazing play. Mm-hmm. I won mm-hmm. and I, I didn't get it wrong ever. Right, because Josh wasn't in my ear chirping at me. That's why. (laughs) But I could see. I I felt so bad because Natalie would guess, and every time she was off by one, and I'm like, oh, and she could just tell that she was like. (laughs) But yeah, she was right that she got a little cocky. The first, it was like we went like three cards. I gone by. She's like, I know it. Six five three. And I'm like, no, honey, no. I'm like, what? Yeah, it has to be. uh, Yeah, she was getting to the point where she was like, one of you had to be lying. You're She's lying. Like, I was like, was someone yeah. wrong when they said it was more than 18? And they're like, no. And I was like, 
Hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love that game. I think it's fan. I'm glad we got it, and I, I really do want to play it with you more. And Me too. I think that you'll. I really want, want to. to. Does it play How past many? four or just four? Ah, uh, five. Oh, past five. Yeah, oh, past five. We should bring it to work game night. Sure, absolutely. Fun, fun stuff. That's so that's one. it. Code seven, seven, seven. Did I say enough seven, sevens? Seven, seven, seven. Three, seven. Sevens. three sevens. Code seven, seven, seven. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, anything else? Uh, something really quick. I want to revisit. You guys already talked about the Artemis project. Yep. Before. Oh, yeah. You know what? I don't know that we ever um, talked about it on the show. Really? I thought I'm you sure did. did. I know we, maybe we did. I know we put, I put it on Instagram and kind of panned it a little bit. Maybe we did talk about it. I felt we like did. you might have. Yeah, maybe we did. Let's, but anyway, let's hear, let's hear just real it. quick, just revisit. So I got to play it with four people. Um, it's a dice placement game. You're, you're developing and you're developing the moon of Jupiter called Europa. Which Jupiter has a whole bunch of moons, I think. Um, <laughs> Probably. And you're on this one, Europa. And you're you're placing dice <laughs> on one of these seven <laughs> You're placing dice on one of these seven spots to either like gather resources or build buildings or go on missions or get more workers. And each spot has its own different place of how you can place dice or what it does for you. So not to get into the game deeply, but I know the two of you guys didn't enjoy it as much. Yeah, I remember um, thinking it was good. I remember th- and I also remember specifically saying like I, I don't think this is good for two. I think, and, and I was like, you know, because of that, we're not going to probably play it all too often with a bunch of people. But I think it's it's going to suffer a little with two. Yeah, yeah, um, I remember that. And too. I remember also we were just we were just yeah, like you said, we were just kind of like ah, I don't know, it's not blowing my yeah. hair back. So I we played it with four, and I I really enjoyed it. I don't have so I've played Alien Frontiers. It's been a long time. But I, I think this game is going to get compared to Alien Frontiers. That like was what I thought. Yeah. Of. yeah, and I don't I don't have Alien Frontiers, and this is a game that I don't have a game in that genre in yeah that for realm. sure and i really liked it and i know even even dave who um doesn't D- love Kong? yeah <laughs> he doesn't love like <laughs> worker placement games he liked this game a lot and i i enjoyed i enjoyed trying to figure out all right how can i get my resources to build these buildings how can i put this dice here and push this dice off so they don't get any resources and i get something and i never felt like there was too much take that i didn't feel like yeah that I didn't feel like my turns were ever ruined. Yeah, but it was tight enough that I I had to I had to plan properly. I agree with you. We were worried about that. We were yeah, worried about the take that we part because that's what a lot of people were talking about. And I didn't feel it either. No, and and the only there was one thing. Bill had a building that was specifically targeted at someone, and he could pick someone to discard some resources. But what that did for me is like, all right, I'm going to spend all my resources before. Yeah, he gets my a chance turn. to ruin every, me. every time. I was like, all right, I'm not. I, I'm going to only have one or two resources <laughs> left, and then his power is useless. useless. Um, but I really enjoyed it. So that, that was the Artemis project. I just wanted awesome. to touch yeah. on. Yeah, that's great. About that's it. is that Deep Water Games? No, that's oh. Grand. Oh, I knew. I know this. Grand Gamers Guild. Grand Gamers. Guild. Grand Gamers yeah. Guild. Yep. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking of uh, another game that we didn't play that I haven't played yet. Yeah. Rec Raiders. That's think, Deep Water Games. No. Rec Raiders is kids' table. <laughs> uh, Something is designed by Deep Water Games. Deep <laughs> Game. <laughs> Joe Madigan is. Uh, yeah. Deep Water. Didn't Joe just meet somebody from Deep Water Games? He did. Oh, yeah. It's it's pretty cool. I didn't know. Welcome so deep- to. He said he is that Deepwater game. Maybe because he said he played that with them and. But where did he come from? You know, where did he go? Where Where did he go? <laughs> well, where did he come from? Deepwater Joe. Deepwater Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome. So yeah. I'm glad you liked it. I kind of thought you might. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of games I play that I think that you'll enjoy. A lot of times I'm wrong <laughs> and you don't. <laughs> and a lot of times, I, you know, a lot of times I'm I, when I don't like a game, I'm like, that's why. Like the Doi Dot to Daskadal. I think you <laughs> might enjoy that yeah. one. So I'm I'm excited to kind of yeah. to kind of like lend it to you and see what you think. You I know hope what I, mean? I hope you guys give like Artemis Project a sh- shot if we played it with four or five. Sure, mm-hmm. I, I would play. It. I would play it again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Me too. I, I wasn't like screw this game. I right. I hate it. Right. I was just kind of like you know, I don't think it works that great with two. It or I should say it was kind of dull with two, but the mechanisms are okay. Yeah. I just I remember thinking you know like okay I, I think I like Alien Frontiers better now and, and and they they kind of felt similar enough to me right. that you know I, that's the one I decided to keep. Mm-hmm. So yeah. awesome stuff. So those are a lot of the games we've been playing recently. Now I wanted to uh, launch into the topic for this week. So we're kind of going to do uh, a thing here and there. Where we're either going to do a topic or we're going to play a game because we don't really have time to do both because I am a long-winded mother. Beep. And uh, <laughs> we are going to this episode do another topic. Uh, Jeff came to me with this idea and I really, really like it. And it is uh, some way to showcase our incredible elitism in board gaming <laughs> by doing the topic that is board gaming pet peeves. Everybody has pet peeves in life, and I'm sure everybody has pet peeves in board gaming. I know I have a lot, and it's fun 
Okay, first I want to caveat this. This is all pretty lighthearted, you know. We're not like, oh, yeah. we're not trying to, to be like, call people super out. elitist right. or yeah. yeah, or like get anybody butt hurt or anything like that. This is more just personal, you know, annoyances that crop up in in gaming, right? Is that kind of the yeah, all yeah. in good fun, yeah, yeah. laughing, yeah. yeah, talking about things we do. Right. Like. I mean, if we lose a friend or two, not a big deal <laughs> for the sake of the show. Got to get those fifty downloads. <laughs> At any cost. So, um, Jeff, this is this was you. You brought this idea to me, and I was super excited about it. So, I'd like to start with you. All right, let's kind of just like we'll each hit one. I'll let's just kind of like go say round one and round, and then yeah, we'll because, see what because I'm worried that we're gonna have a lot of overlap here. I would guess. Probably. Yeah. So, all right, Jeff, so that'll be fun. Let's hear your first one, man. So, I think this this one I think has has developed over time, and I think is also stemmed from Ryan James. Uh oh. One of the Whoa, pet peeves, and right. this is not this like maybe we won't be. And I, I have like different James things. Some of it is about gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> so some of like the pet peeves are about gameplay or people you're playing with, and some of it is about like nitpicking about like what. But anyway, here's here's my one. The front of the box, the box lid needs to be on the same direction <laughs> oh as the bottom God. of the box. <laughs> I didn't think about things like it that. Ha- so that's it, like I will. Or and my OCD my students are awful at it, and I don't know. You have like. A pretty good shot. Most games are 50, rectangles. 50, you well, got a fifty guess, yeah, fifty 25% shot. Twenty five percent chance, right? And I, so I will. They will be playing a game. They'll put it away, and before I put it into my bag to go home, I will look at it and I will flip boxes <laughs> around. And the kids are like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "Mind your own business." Uh, <laughs> it's time to go. So I that's found one. that telling yep. people what I'm doing, it's worse for me it's because worse. now they're like, "Well, I'm they... just going to put it on another way because right. I'm an asshole." Yeah. Or they like, make fun Ugh. of you. <laughs> So that was that was that is my... a great one, dude. Yeah, I, oh my gosh, I, I, that drives me nuts too. Mm-hmm. Well, like you said, I guess it stemmed from me. I do. I cannot stand that. Okay, Natalie, what about you? What's your uh, oh, let's what's see. a board gaming pet peeve that you have? Um, Natalie just unrolled a scroll. By the yeah. way, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. which one shall I go with? Um, <laughs> I'll say when you're playing like a long game in a thinky game and somebody is not thinking about what they're going to do on their turn until their turn starts <gasps> which just drags the game on even longer <laughs> yeah. Say, yeah oh is it my turn like okay yeah like, yeah you're right it's you don't know what you're going to do now we have to wait 10 minutes for you to minutes. think <laughs> it's already been 25 minutes and their turn comes around and then they're still sitting there because they don't know it's their turn for one yeah. and then when they, you tell them it's their turn they're like okay hmm like, oh you, like, you have a big what thing were you doing? Yeah. yeah, you were just replaying that porn. You, you had twenty minutes to figure out your turn. <laughs> like, come on! <laughs> yeah, that's a fantastic. I one. agree. Yeah. And, uh, Bill always has a funny comment to that when anybody at game night says something like that. He's like, "Yep, you're always after Joe." Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> was it, was it my, my turn? God. Yep, God. I just did that to you me did? last week. No, he doesn't. Yep, he didn't you're always just, after me. He didn't just do that to me last night. He does that to me every single yeah. time we play. So funny. I'm not going to say that's a pet peeve. But I was gonna say, know when your turn is, honey. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I would just think like <laughs> I was gonna say that's probably a pet peeve. Like you're not paying attention enough to know that it's. Your I also turn. recognize I'm hyperactive with my like. Let's keep going. Let's keep it going. Yeah. It's yeah. your turn. It's your turn. It's your, I get it. it. I don't blame you. While while gaming is like the most social thing you can do, I also un- realize like okay, if we want to do more, we gotta we gotta move because yeah. some some games yeah. have been accidentally ruined. We played role player one time when I used to own role player with Brian and Heather, and Brian and Heather and Natalie and I when we get together, we just we just go off on tangible we'll talk a lot and so we started playing role player and then you know we start tangent after chatting. tangent and then no one really wants to play yeah. anymore and it, you know i'm like okay to to avoid that and so we don't have you know bad play i like to try to keep it moving so yeah, yeah. that's I, so fun yeah but you're after like him every said, time like every i said time. last night though i was like you could just be like hey it's your turn instead of being like well yeah you go every <laughs> you go after brian every I time i feel like if i let shame you a little bit it'll correct the behavior well, he's, <laughs> okay no. in my defense i'm okay first of all I agree that that is a normal pet peeve. Hi, my name is Natalie. Hi, Natalie. <laughs> I agree that's a pet peeve, and I will admit that I do that sometimes. But a lot of times it's because I'm thinking about what to do, and I'm not noticing that the person before me finished their turn, and that it's not my turn, mm. because I'm thinking about my turn. Mm-hmm. So if you ever notice, mm-hmm. when you do remind me that it's my turn, I'm like, boom, done. And I take my turn quickly. Absolutely. <laughs> right. For I sure. agree with Natalie's pet peeve. <laughs> know what you're going to do, or at least have an idea of what you're going to do before yes. it's your turn. Think Especially right. in a thinky game, you're Think right. Think while it's yeah. someone else's yeah. turn. I mean, some yep. games it's not that bad because yeah, it's quick, game but, but games that are like, you know, takes 30 minutes to do one it's round, bu- you have plenty a of time. Big <laughs> bummer. All right. My first gaming pet peeve that I want to talk about has to do with terminology. 
in in game and uh, <laughs> I, I don't I don't think Bill and Christy listen to this show but th- Christy shares this pet peeve with me and it's calling components chits, chits. or bits I hate I don't know why but that just like I don't like that I got about 13 bits here got oh did you get that chit no they're components this is more of a personal like uh, I'm pretty OCD, so it's more of like a personal OCD thing. You with have me, that I with think. rules I just, versus It just doesn't really make any sense. And I also like everyone throws around gaming terms like this game is so elegant, and I just hate that. It drives me nuts. <laughs> it peeves my pet. Is that a, is that how it works? Sure. It, yeah, it's a pet peeve of mine. Yeah. So no chits, no bits here. I, I prefer to call them, you know, tiles or you know, just components. In chit some way. sounds like a dirty word. Yeah, it yeah. kind of—it's like it, it, it's like dirty. Well, I don't even really understand it. Like a Why, chit. Like who started? I think there are direct. There has to be, like in rules or something. It says that chits? says chit somewhere. Where did that come and from? Bits. I don't know, but it always. Whenever I hear someone say it, I'm like, I hate. Well, I don't when like I hear it. the word bits, I think of like. Oh, you're going sexual here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Yes>. Naughty bits. <laughs> yeah. Got my naughty, naughty bits. She's like, Genitalia. Yeah, bits. <laughs> so yeah, board gaming. Some board gaming terminology like that turns me out. There's more terminology, but it's essentially those. Those are the the main ones. The bits and the chits. Mm-hmm. All right, Jeff. What about you? I have another one about game boxes. This is a sequel to the first. My first pet peeve. Oh yeah. I don't like box when damage. the well box damage is just a story of my life. <laughs> oh, on a side it note, is. one of my kids like crushed a game box. I'm like, thank oh, you no. for that. Would they just sit on it? I'm like, I'm glad Thanksgiving is next week. Oh. And I'm like, no, he's like leaning on it. I'm like, what's what? What are you doing? You're a senior. Like he was like had his hand on it, and it was just like dishing it. Yeah. Were you like stop it? I I like saw the game after it was already like dented, and I'm like. <sighs> What happened? What game was it? Then we had I Team know Three. What game was. Oh, that's I a know. pretty sturdy box too. How are they? Man, they got to put some force on know. there. Anyway, Ay. pet peeve: when you take a game out and you set everything up, and then you take the box top and you put it on the bottom, like you put the box underneath in inside. The, yeah, I don't like that. And then you can't get it back out, <laughs> and then it takes forever to get it back out. Natalie doesn't like approve of our pet peeves. It. I don't think we just have very different pet peeves. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I have like gameplay pet peeves okay. as well that I was I'll like, get mine to. Are all about, but I'm like, going. People. And I was like, mine are all mean. Yeah. <laughs> mine are all shaming people. No, because then I go around and it's the same thing at Board Game Club. I'll like go around and I'll like t- shake the yeah, box it's like, top out of the get bottom. It off. And it's annoying. Yeah. So stop That's it. That's annoying. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> and then like, you know, you set it up. You can like look at it. I don't know. That's my favorite thing is setting it up and looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the art. Yeah, leave it out of Just the damn jam it box top. Good one. Yeah. All right, Natalie, what's your next one that's going to make everyone angry? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I hate people. Who wronged you? I know. <laughs> what happened Basically. to you? <laughs> um, okay, another one I wrote down was like sabotaging a game because you're not having fun or you don't care about uh-huh. it or don't get Ooh, it. That's a yeah, good one. That's a I good have one. an example. We played the game one time at work. At work, and some people, I think that they just like didn't really understand it, and so they were just throwing cards out there. They just totally screwed Ugh. up the whole game, and we were like, yep. "What are you doing?" And they were like, "It's funny." And they like, like thought oh, it was funny, okay. and we were just like so like annoyed. Like this is like, all right. I mean, you know, not, <laughs> yeah. not like anger, but yeah. Like, like I mean, we didn't show it, but we were just like, well, like, it's now okay. the game's not that fun like, because you just, just kind of like, ruined everything. Yeah. There's I, no way we can win it now. I agree. That was one on my list. That was just like th- there is some integrity to some of these games, and you're just like not you're like ruining it for everyone, uh-huh. right, right? And it happens with the mind too, where it's like yeah, you play the mind that was and you put your hands out, of. and then you're like, all right, we're ready. And then in one second, someone plays 35. And right. You're like, and you're like, no, like, no, like, no one else played that? anything. I'm like, yeah. like come on, try. know the group. Yep. Try to have fun. That's why try games like that it. with the right group are the greatest, but they're yes. so easily ruined. Right. So it's hard to, okay, that's a good one. All right, so my next one, um, kind of on the heels of that, I guess, in a way is, um, and, and I'm everyone's guilty of these things, right? So this isn't like me calling anyone out because I've done the same thing mm-hmm. I'm about to say. Yeah, a I've lot done of some these of these before. things too. <laughs> and this one here, uh, so I teach a lot of games, right? You as you as do you. Yeah. And so one of my board gaming pet peeves is when someone either constantly interrupts the teach that you're teaching, and I'm guilty of this. So I, I you know, I you know, I understand mm-hmm. both sides <laughs> uh, when someone constantly interrupts your teach, but but really an extension of that is, and then doesn't know how to play, and so then is stopping the game constantly throughout the game to ask about rules that you would have... already went that, over. Yeah, we went over this. Right. If you would have just... You were interrupting every three seconds with either a joke or you were... Or a question or, that you didn't, yeah, a question that didn't get didn't, to yet. Yeah, I haven't gotten to. And then, um, yeah, so then you're playing the game and now it's like, what about this, what about this, what about this, what about this? And everyone else is kind of like, oh my God, he went over that. Like, he said that. 
That's already that's been we've been established that. Again, there was sometimes at work a couple people that that happens they just can't hold it in. Yeah. I suppose, and it, and admittedly it, it mostly happens with nons, <laughs> <laughs> which is what I use for non gamers. <laughs> so it mostly happens with nons because they just don't. Yeah, they don't think it matters. They're as invested much or, in the social aspect more yeah. than the game, and, and I really understand yeah. Yeah. rules overhead is can be a bear. So a lot of people have this mentality, which is also a pet peeve of mine, where they're just like. Let's just play and figure it out as we go. No, <laughs> let's not. Please, let's, let's know not. the rules. Let's so know that's that's one of my big pet peeves is that's a good one. teaching it and then people interrupt yeah. the teaching. Then you know it's kind of yeah. Frustrating. I never teach games and that bothers me because I'm I know you. I mean you've probably taught me like 300 games. Yeah. <laughs> so I know your like teaching style and you always like I guarantee if they have a question you will eventually get to it. And so it like annoys me when someone's like, "What about this?" And I'm just like, "He'll go to it, just try it." <laughs> well, I, and and when, and when they do that, that's not even as bad. Like if they're like, "Well," and they ask, asking a question throughout the middle isn't to- totally as bad for me. Mm-hmm. It's more, I guess, like I, I'll be explaining something, and then someone will be like, "Well, that's dumb. Why is it like that?" Or this oh, is this like is the comments. or or they'll just be they'll start making jokes mm-hmm. or talk or even talking to somebody else at the table. They're clearly not paying while attention. I'm, and so I'm like, okay, so I'm just gonna, gonna stop play. because. Yeah. This is going to ruin it for everyone else because you guys are just having your own conversation while I'm trying to teach it. Mm-hmm. You know, <sighs> that's like just my life as a teacher. That's like my job. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, dude, holy eighty cow. percent of my job is repeating something I've already said. <laughs> <laughs> what page is this on? Well, I told you, and it's written on the board. <laughs> it's on the front of your worksheet. It's cool. Like, are you paying attention? Well, what happens if I do this? D- did I just tell you that thirty <laughs> seconds ago? <laughs> what happened if you listened? <laughs> what, happened? what would happen? What would happen right. if you stopped? This for class one would second only be a half hour. <laughs> and you just listen yeah. to the things yeah. that I'm telling you. <laughs> oh my god, that's gosh. great! I agree with that, and yeah. I, I've been guilty of it as two. Two, sure. where you're just like you you're in the goofy zone, yes. and you're just yeah. like someone's explaining Puerto Rico, and you're like goofy, and you're like, yes. I'm gonna shit about Puerto Rico right now. Yep. Ha ha ha! Yep. And you're right. just like, I know. And, and I can like, feel, <laughs> I feel for for Bill yes, in that I, moment, I, yeah. or, or or Brian. I feel for these guys because you know that happens a lot where you're just goofy. Yeah. And, and so I get you have it. To check yourself. I do sometimes. get it, but I also understand that it sucks. Yes. <laughs> so all right, that's it. So what about you, Jeff? Ooh, I got weird. I got more weird box stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'll box I got weird box stuff. So oh, I yeah. don't like when I have a pet peeve for when I buy a new board game and it comes with a bunch of bits or chits. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and the game does not provide any bags. Yeah, man. Why don't you just give me small plastic bags? Is it that to expensive. Put them all in there. <laughs> So in some games I get a whole bunch and I'm like this is like hitting a gold this. mine yeah like right. key flower yeah they, they give you thousands of bags thousands of bags. and the components <laughs> already thousands. come in bags and I'm like and they this want is... you to throw those bags away and use the new bags I'm like this is just wonderful <laughs> yeah. and I, now 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 and I can use I these bags a... for all the games oh, that I, don't I, have bags I went bags. to Jeff's house one day and he was Scrooge McDucking through his bag collection just, in yeah. his basement I have a bag full of bags because of games that don't provide bags that box right there is full of nothing but baggies just just bags should I say bags again. Bags. Yeah, bags. bags. So if you're bags, publishing bags. a game, put some bags in there. Help yeah. us all out. I have more box ones. Yes. Later. <laughs> These are not the only <laughs> box related pet peeves Jeff owns. Um, yeah. I agree with that. So a, a long time ago, I don't. I feel like this is kind of newer. Like we were a little spoiled. A while, I feel like a long time ago, games didn't come with baggies, and then now they kind of do. A lot to the point where I agree with you. When, when you, you don't one. see one, you're like, yep. okay, what am I supposed to do with all this crap? Yeah, I'm not throwing it in the box. Right. That your insert is terrible. Yep, and that's so my next one. You want me to spend more money? Oh, sorry. I'm, no, you want I'm me to spend to more it. money? <laughs> We're talking about the insert now. <laughs> All right, what do you got? I know so, I'm running out. <laughs> this is also good for like the opposite. Like I love a good insert to a game. Sure. Whether it's like game trays who are now like finding themselves. Yeah, they're like making so yeah, incredible, so, uh, or something that's just like mm-hmm. the form fitting game. Like, man, this is so nice. Mm-hmm. And then the opposite being where you just have like the box. Mm. Or I, for some reason, what I hate more is when. The box has that cardboard thing in the middle of it, and it divides it into two parts, but then nothing really fits in either of those parts. And Aaliyah. I'm like, why don't you just, if you're going to do something, just make it an empty box Aaliyah. and let me it's throw like every things. Aaliyah game there is. Yeah, why is that thing there? I don't know. So or there's like a box. Take own. it out. Or there's a box that's enormous, and there's like two little things in it. And it's like, why don't you just make this small? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. That's so make good box inserts. That's all my box related ones. PSA. Probably. PSA to board game developers. <laughs> yeah. What do you got, babe? What, what do you got? Oh, boy. I don't know. So I don't want to say something. No, get them bad. Good. Come on. so mean. Yep. <laughs> Let's hear it. Okay. It's about one specific person or something. No, it's not. No, it's not. Um, I mean, I wrote, like, not paying attention, but we kind of already talked about that, and I'm guilty of that sometimes. But anyways, <laughs> moving on. I'm going to also... Don't take this, like, in a mean way. 
Oh, it's not about it's you about guys. Me. Oh gosh, it's, I'm, I'm like this is about no, me. no, no. It's not about you guys. It's just like in general. And Doing again, I do men. this. Yeah. <laughs> I have done this because your emotions can get high, but um, it can be annoying when people are sore losers. Mm. Because, and I've been there because I've been I played game. Yeah, I you played Star Wars Destiny. You know how it goes. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, that's true. But I guess I don't. Maybe I'm never really a sore loser. I get very frustrated sometimes and i can get mad at like at the game yeah i don't care usually if i win or lose yeah um so it's not about no, being i don't loser, think but when people offended, specifically this care yep. about losing the game and then it makes me feel like i'm like guilty yeah, for now winning I and i can't for, enjoy for it doing, openly uh-huh. because like you are like feeling so bad about not winning let's discuss this more because my next one was being a bad sport <laughs> yeah grumpy I, gamers I grumpy, grumpy yep. okay, okay so yeah. we all got this one and i honestly we've all been there <laughs> yes I'm so done it. so don't think you listeners that we are calling out you know you and we're oh, yeah, and like we would this, never do that happens, yeah all would. three <laughs> of us here are very emotional people and so it happens. It happens. There's mm-hmm. going to be a game where you, you know, you feel like you're getting completely screwed, right. and you're having, and then it just it just wears on yeah. you, and then you have you can't really not let it out. But to Natalie's point, that unbeknownst to you, maybe in the moment, it can completely tank the game for the rest of the people playing, because, like she said, now someone doing decent is feeling guilty because oh god, I'm I'm having a good turn here. And now I, I feel okay, like I can't. I feel upset. like I can't really say yeah. that I'm having a good time because they're just going to get more, more mad. Right. And yeah, so I try so hard to curb that. Mm-hmm. You know, now, no, I mean, and, and honestly, that happened way more when we first started gaming. Yeah. Now that we've played more, it's yeah. like okay, you kind of understand how to act right. Mm-hmm. You know, for right. Lack of better. Or like for me, like I'll get like angry, and then like. Five minutes later, the game's over and I've moved on. I'm not like yeah. holding and then on you to kind of it. Feel, well, then you kind of feel <laughs> silly. You're right. Like, oh, that was, that didn't mean yeah, yeah, why did I do that? Like, like, yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. That, I've done it. We've all done it. Yeah. And you have to like check yourself in the moment of like, okay, yeah. just have fun. Right. Yeah. I'm being like, an asshole. Just have fun. I'm, I'm being right. dumb. And, <laughs> I've, guess, and I've done yeah. it. And yeah, I've like sure. in the middle of games and now like I've played it up because uh, like you guys and, and playing with Monday night, they'll. They'll always be like, oh, Jeff's behind. He's complaining. And then all of a sudden he wins. And yeah. now, like, th- there's a point at which I'll play that up a little bit. Now yeah, it's sure. like funny right, or it's whatever. A thing. It's a thing. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes you just got to like check yourself. And, and I play most of the time on Monday nights. We start at seven o'clock. Sure. And I'm tired. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Newborn. That working. And I get there. And you. then there's a moment of like, okay, am I not enjoying the game? Am I being grumpy? Am I tired? Yeah. And sometimes I've even left game night before where I've like texted Joe or Dave and I'm like, I'm sorry, man. I was just tired. Yep. I liked the game. I enjoyed yep. it. I'm sorry if I made it bad. Yep. I apologize. Mm-hmm. So yeah, grumpy gaming is yeah. a pet peeve that I, I have think it's also... more like if you're consistently. Yeah. You know, like everybody has things Moments. going on. Yeah. Well, also what I like about what you said there is be if you're going to be like that, be self-aware enough yeah. to know you've done it. And then if you really think you impacted somebody else's good times, to tell them. Yeah. You know, I've done that. I've done that before. You and me have played a game and I'm like, look, I was just terrible Mm -hmm. i'm sure to play with and let's play it again tomorrow i guarantee that will not happen like i'm sorry right you know i've done like that's happened uh, because it happens to everybody Mm -hmm. all these things happen to everybody i think a good reason to have this list is to just kind of shed a little self-awareness onto everybody Mm -hmm. like if this is what you're doing it's okay we all do it but be aware of it and try to fucking stop yeah yeah stop ruining game for everyone you know who the worst offenders are Non. Children, children, children. Oh. Oh, because children. children, all they care about is winning and losing, and it's That's life true. or death. Yep. you know, if, teachable moments. Lexi yes. lost strike oh, for the man. first time. She wins that, right? Yeah, for she's the first only. Time, said. It was. It was actually pretty sad because she wasn't throwing. She wasn't throwing a tantrum, but she was crying. Maybe like like Texas raindrop tears. Oh man, yeah. you know they were like enormous giant tears, and you know it's you're like it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. You're a right. little bit of a loser, but it's all right. You know? oh my God. Well, it's <laughs> you funny. Know? Like, if you play like, games with Lexi and Cameron, obviously one of them yep. are going to lose. Uh-huh. And so one of them's going to be upset every time. And it's just like, but it's would, getting better. Right. Yeah. It is the getting better. We play, and we always try to, you know, explain Cameron like, especially it's, it's just so about having fun. It doesn't matter. We don't, Look, I lost too, but yeah. I don't care because I had a fun time. He's resigned know? himself to the fact that Lexi's going to win strike. And so yeah. he just, he'll just, at one point, he just, in his head, it switches from, I want to win too. I know I've lost. And he'll be like, I lost. Lexi won. And I'm like, And he's oh. almost like he's okay like, with that's it. A go- 
Like, yeah. that's a very grown up, mature switch to make. Mm-hmm. Instead of going, I'm gonna lose. Ah! Yeah. You know, he's right. like, okay, I I've lost. I'm, so I'm gonna <laughs> remove myself from the emotional weight of this. So, anyway, yeah, that's a that's a good one. Right, because I'm a I'm a firm believer of not like letting them win and like cheating like you know changing the game rules no, stomp their faces and sure you know yeah. i know i don't stomp <laughs> their faces them. i definitely yeah. don't but like i just mean like i don't Crush like being like self-esteem. oh no she's gonna be upset let's just pretend she won and i'm like no i'm always like it could be worse you could be up on the dietloff pass <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> oh my god uh, that's terrible <laughs> yeah the dietloff <laughs> um, I could go on okay. with this thing. For what else like, we got? Oh, I only we'll have really let's one just rattle, more. Let's just rattle some yeah. off. Greasy fingers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, don't eat Doritos. He stuck his thumb out like, that's touch, one of 20. <laughs> yeah, and then touch all this stuff. Okay? <laughs> I like things in good condition. Yeah, right. I don't want your damn Cheeto fingers all over my brand new cards. Yeah, don't, when you hold <laughs> cards in your hand, don't bend them. Oh, yeah. Like, just hold them like normal. Like, you don't yeah, need to, like, hide the them cards. and turn them into, like, a circle. And then, like, don't stop mm-hmm. bending my cards. People do that because, like, regular playing cards are like a dime. And yeah. so people yeah. just don't, just go. they don't think to respect it. Because the, yeah, when, they play, when they play Euchre or Poker or something, they just bend those cards. And yep. no one gives a crap because they're not actually, these games are expensive. You know, these are these are different. So, mm-hmm. agreed. Yeah. Put them away properly. Put them away properly. Put them away properly. Don't disrespect you, my game components. And if you don't want to put them, don't just don't touch it. Let me do it. Yeah. Just leave it on the table. I'll put them away. I feel like Jeff's going to have I a got, lot of these because of the kids. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got a lot of them because of the <laughs> ruining things. It's about a third of the way through. And another one for <laughs> game designing. I don't like when art does not match up or line up when What's you're the lining up. Or even just like... Literally the physical. If supposed so to go Penny together. Lane is an example. Oh, like I enjoy Penny design. Lane. When yeah. you put the Penny Lane cards next to each other, they don't. They're supposed to match. You get yeah. half a coin on one card, sure. half a coin on the other card, and you put it next to each other, and it doesn't match. That's a printing error. That's a printing error. I also don't like Underwater Cities. Is not one of my favorite games, and is one of my favorite games. And they the colors on one of the the eras are different. Mm. Like the purples are mm. different shade. Mm-hmm. So printing errors bother me, but, yeah. especially when, like you said, you spend $70 on a game and it's like, it's printed wrong. Yep. And That's, then your greasy fingers sense. are all your over fingers. Wrong. And then the anyway. box is dented. And then the box is dented. Oh, yeah. some kid yeah, leaning yeah. On it, and then it's underneath. And <laughs> Oh man, just gonna have to. I'm good. I'm good. Gonna, he's gonna have I'm to good. dissolve Board Game Club, I think, yeah. <laughs> for a few Natalie, months. Natalie, what do you have? He's gonna require all his kids to listen to this episode. Yeah, yeah listen to this episode. Yeah. Seriously, PSA. Yeah. You want to come to Board Game Club? Listen to uh, minute one twenty to yeah. one thirty. <laughs> okay, um, I'm so sorry, but I have oh to call gosh. you out. <laughs> Me? Yeah, specifically. Uh-oh. You already know this. Specific. Turn her mic down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you already yeah, know this because I yell at you every single time you do this. Oh. Because <laughs> it drives me crazy. <laughs> I have no idea what she's going to say. Uh-oh. Yes, you do. So No, I don't. <laughs> there's so many times that we play a game <laughs> and Ryan will say, you're going to win. Oh, And I'm like, yeah. well, now that you said that, I guarantee I'm going to lose. Literally because every time every, I'm wrong. Because for, you know, probably the first hundred times he said that and I'm like, oh, wow he thinks i'm gonna win he, you know that's so cool and i get my hopes up and then every time crushed i lose well, not crushed. oh your your feelings are crushed yes and so now i'm just like he's like i think you're going i'm like why did you just say that don't ever say that again <laughs> you just me. jinxed me <laughs> yeah I, that that's one's funny. probably relegated to me alone <laughs> I, I will say this to you in uh, one little bit of defense for myself i mean i know you truly mean i it. do I am not like saying think? that to be like, okay, this is my meta way of ruining. <laughs> no, I you. know that. I, I, know I that. truly, every time it happens, I'm like, oh yeah, she's got this, and then I make a charge, you know, because it's it usually, it's usually me that ends up winning, right? When yes. it happens, so I can see that. <laughs> yes, I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I can understand that's a pet peeve. I don't think I'll stop. So my <laughs> next pet peeves here. I uh, this one is more with with board gaming media content creator and this applies to youtube channels and instagram names every single person in the world this is this is this goes along with my terminology pet peeve of chits and bits every single person be more original than using the word meeple in your name 
If you're going to do a oh. new YouTube content <laughs> creation, don't call yourself the blah, blah meeple or the meeple blah, blah or this and that meeple. And I realize I'm probably alienating a lot of people already <laughs> oh, that have no. that name. And I'm not saying I don't like it. I just, whenever I see it, I'm always like, there's other things in the hobby you could call yourself than the whatever meeple. Mm -hmm. I was talking with, there were some friends of mine that we were going to a long time ago start uh, some YouTube like uh, network to try to not combat the dice tower, but to just have something else out there. And they were like, we should call ourselves the 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 Meeple's Far or something like that. And I'm like, can we just not use Meeple? It doesn't have to always be Meeple. There's so <laughs> many things in the game hobby that are not Meeple that let, we've done Meeple to death. Let's do something else, you know? And the people that have Meeple, they already got it on lockdown. Yeah, they yeah, got it. it There's it. enough of the Meeple's. Yeah. You guys are killing it out there. I'm proud of all you Meeple people. They got it. The Meeple, <laughs> yeah, there, I think there is a Meeple people. There is a Meeple people. Well, they, yeah, and there's the, the Meeple uh, among that's people. That's the show. Yeah, like the Meeple among people. Ryan on, he's on Instagram, and there's like the me married Meeple's. Yes, yeah, the broken they Meeple. Got, they got them right. They got them up. They got there's them tons of, yeah, the Meeple's, it's, it's, uh, that's great. I mean, Again, I'm not trying to to shit on all the people that already have the meeple name, <laughs> but we don't need more of it. Mm -hmm. All right, that's so that's one. Uh, bad rule books is one oh, for me. Yeah, yes. so um, that's a good one. We talked earlier about this game, Visitor in Blackwood Grove, and I've already talked to the designer of the game, so this isn't me calling him out necessarily. But this rule book was so dreadfully written and, and presented, I could not play the game. And this is all for all intents and purposes a very simple, simple game. I could not even remotely understand anything of what was happening. So. Invest some money in a proofreader, and it's so hard when you're writing a rule book. I can imagine because I'm, you know, working through some designs where you're so close to the game. And you're writing your rule book, assuming you know things that you shouldn't about about teaching it. People are not in your brain; they don't know what you know about the game. You have to teach, and this is in every kind of thing you're teaching. I'm sure Jeff can probably attest to this as he's an actual teacher <laughs> that you have to teach these things, these concepts to people as if they've never heard of this before. Really? Can they understand, you know, from you, but basically have never, having never, knowing nothing about the game. That's what this rule book is doing. It should teach you, mm -hmm. you know, thing by thing about the game. You don't use, you know, terminology that you haven't identified or defined yeah. yet. And, well, another you know, thing important is the flow. Like you shouldn't do, you shouldn't say something that's important to the beginning of the game and the last page of the book. So the whole time you're like, "What?" Okay, Until so the last this page happened in Mechanica. Yeah. We you're played like, Mechanica, oh, okay. which is actually by the same <laughs> the same yeah. publishing guys. And great game, I like the game a lot. But there was one thing at the very beginning of the game is talking about the setup, and it says, "Place both decks of these cards face up." And I'm like, "Both decks? There's supposed to be two decks. How do I split these decks in half? There's only fifteen cards. cards. How do I split them?" It doesn't say <laughs> until the very last page of the rule book. The very last page where it talks about setting up for the next play, it says, split these 15 cards into a pile of eight and a pile of seven. Then flip the top one face up and put it there. I'm like, okay. Why wasn't, it why the wasn't that the very yeah. beginning yeah. of setup? It's just like stuff like that they just don't think of. So right. bad rule books uh, is, 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 a, very important. It could, is a big pet peeve it for me. It could make the game start off much better. Yes. Jeff already talked about disrespect of game components. That was another one that is a gigantic, maybe one of the biggest pet peeves there is, the bending cards, the Cheeto yeah. fingers, yep. the <laughs> crushing <laughs> boxes, fingers. basically just not treating a game as if it's your own. You know, it's the golden rule, right? Treat yeah. people the way you want to be treated. Treat their stuff the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a lot of the, that's basically all I have for pet peeves. Yeah, that yeah, was same. good. Well, half hour complaining. That was, yes. I, like I feel that. good. Yeah, I feel, good. I feel, I feel better. nice. It is so nice to put people down. <laughs> oh my god. Other people. So, um, with that, let's go into the second part of our top fives. Last episode, Jeff came to me with a couple ideas for top fives, which I thought were amazing. Very great contributions from our newest That's member. Why he's a I game will say this is now. why you have the corner <laughs> section of the table. Hey oh. <laughs> corner section. Like the corner <laughs> office. Yeah, the corner office. <laughs> so the first one we did last episode was top five games that make you feel dumb. Dumb. Right? Dumb. Now we're going to wrap this up, come full circle with top five games that make you feel smart. 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 We will see you on the flip. All right, all right, all right. We are back with the top five games that make you feel smart, smart. intelligent, whatever. When I made my list, Bring this was me. not... I didn't just put games on my list that I win all the time. Those two things go hand in hand. But there are games that I've lost a lot 
that I still, when I win them or when I do something good, I feel smart doing it. So you'll see that reflected in my list. I agree. Yeah. I, I don't win these games every single time I play them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Some I, I'm competitive and I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. So I agree. Yeah, right. So they can go hand to hand. But, you know, I was, Natalie and I were talking about this and she was kind of like, I don't know what to really. And I'm like, well, th- maybe you're thinking about it just as games I win all the time, mm-hmm. which, again, they go hand in hand. But that doesn't necessarily mean. Right. So with that, um, Jeff, again, since this is your idea, I want to end with you, if you're okay with that. Ooh, Do you want right, to kick yeah. us off this time, Natalie? Oh, sure. What is your number five game? All that right. makes you feel smart. My smart. number five game. Um, <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> I put the exit and unlock games and I want to explain yeah. that these games also make me feel really dumb because there's a lot of times when you're like, what? I just can't get it. I, but sure. But the reason I put it on here is because when I do figure out a puzzle that everyone else is struggling to get yeah, and I'm struggling totally to get and then agree. I figure it yeah. out, I feel like the smartest person alive. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great You're moment. really good at it. Yes, so you do. You, you have are. those moments a lot. So I think that's a fantastic one to put yep, on your list. So that's my number five. Yep, good one. Love it. Okay. My number five is um, a game that I don't win all the time. But again, it's, it's kind of similar to what you said. Sometimes when I come up with the perfect clue... I feel so amazing. And this is code names. Mm, yeah. So I'll give somebody a clue. I'll be thinking about it. And all of a sudden, I will see the matrix and be like, oh, if I say there's two words out there, one of them is uh, Seattle and one of them is, oh, dang. I, and one of them is uh, wa- like washing machine. And I say the word Sears. Mm. You know, Sears yeah. too. And then someone's like, oh, boom, Sears. You know, they sell washing machines. Oh, and they're the space needles in yeah. Seattle. You know, or, or the Sears Tower or whatever. Yeah. Uh, maybe, is that in Seattle? maybe it's different. Maybe I thought it's different. it was like Chicago. Chicago. Whatever. Either whatever city it was in, you know, I, I come up <laughs> yeah. with that clue yeah, and yeah. I'm like, oh my God, that like that feels so good to me. And yeah. I feel like brilliant in that yeah. moment. Or conversely, when you're on the other side of the table and you feel that communication with the person who gave the clue and you're like, I know what they're saying. Boom, 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 boom. And you feel so smart for for getting what they're laying down. So that's my number five code names. That's a good one. That is a good one. My number five is a game that I played three times i have absolutely dominated in this game every time i've played played it and christy so we've played it three player three times since i have won that game three times by a hundred points easily that bill has gotten rid of this game (laughs) Um, it's by gmt it's a game called urban sprawl oh yeah urban sprawl and this this was hard for me to pick number five i wanted to put it there because i feel like when i win i'm winning i'm just like Yes, yeah. like the gods have opened up this right. knowledge. But part of me is also like, I don't necessarily know why I'm winning by that much. I'm just playing the game like everyone else. But my score, I'm just like, just lapping the track. I'm like, yes. You're like, I could do anything. Shoot me, Bill. Bill, shoot me right yeah. in the chest. And Urban Sprawl, it's a heavier game. It's, you know, probably in that three and a half range sure. on uh, BGG. But for some reason, it just clicks and I get it. And I do well, and I'm like, genius. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Unlike That's when awesome. I play Splendor, which was my number one game of feeling dumb. Fun- Dude, I listened back to that episode after we aired it, and I was like, that was the funniest. There were some funny parts yeah, that in that episode. Fun. That included. I, I could not stop laughing yeah. at that. You're like, well, I get a one discount on white. Cool. All right. Now I have two points. Game Dave's like, over. neat. Longest road I win. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Natalie, what's your number four? My number four um, is this little trick-taking game called Fox in the Forest. Ooh. Oh, that's a cool game. Um, I know Ryan doesn't like that nope. game, but <laughs> <laughs> that's one that makes <laughs> he me feel the dumb. opposite. That's one that makes but me feel dumb. I felt very smart. I felt like I knew exactly what to do. I knew exactly what to play, and it always like worked out for me. Um, I like trick taking games, and I feel like I do pretty well at them. And so yes. this is one that I specifically remember every time we'd play i'm like nailed it <laughs> you did similar with claim when we, we played claim yeah. you you killed it at that too that's a good one yep um i hate that game so my number four <laughs> my number four is one we just played last night we talked about it briefly before we started the show that i've played it four times now every play i've i wouldn't say i've dominated i've won every time i've played and every time i've played i've i've felt like i got i got it like i got it and I was just saying last night while we were before we started playing this, I was like, I don't know if I'm like, I feel like I I know what I'm doing, but I don't know if that means I'm good at it or what. And this last play last night, I had my highest score ever. It was against four players I never played before, and I won again. And it, it was this was wingspan. Yeah, you're good at wingspan. I, I just feel like I I I get it. I again, I kind of like see the matrix there. Like every time I've played, I'm like, 
I just do this and this and this, and I got these combos, and I feel like, okay, I have to do this to win. I'm I'm surveying everybody. I don't know if anyone else, if people do that as much in that game, but I'm always kind of like, okay, how many points does Natalie got over there? Birds, okay, this person has this. Okay, so I'm going to get this card, and then, oh, I got this. You know what I mean? I, I really see the Matrix in that game, and I feel good. I don't feel like it's the end of it, and I'm like, I don't know. Pretty much all four games I've played, I'm like, I think I won. You know, I'm pretty sure I won. I'm pretty sure you did. You know what I mean? So um, that's my number four, Wingspan. Awesome. Jeff, what about you? Number four. My number four, um, Eggert Spiel. Eggert Spiel. Game I love. My top probably five. Um, a game called Coimbra. Coimbra. I knew that was mm-hmm. going to be there. Uh, Coimbra I love. And I, I, again, I haven't won this game every single time I've played it. I've played it yeah. f- maybe five times. And at least five times. Five. Anyway. Sure. And it's, I just get it. I get what dice to take. I get, all right, I need these colors to do this, to move my guy around the map, to get more gold. I just, I I, I get the system of mm-hmm. what I need to do. It's a hard game, yeah. too. And I love the game. And that, again, that's too. some of these go into like, these are one of your favorite games because also you're good at it and you get it. All that goes hand in hand. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. You win well, a lot because you, you get it. You love it because of you win a lot and you get it. And yep. yeah, makes you feel good and smart. Yeah. So that's my number four. I like it. Cool. Natalie, hit us with your number three. My number three. I like how you close the book every time. I don't know. I like, <laughs> be prepared next time, Natalie, and then I'm not. Yeah, that was one of our pet peeves, remember? <laughs> yeah, it's your turn. It's your turn. <laughs> um, okay, I was struggling with this list, and I almost put Coimbra here, and then I took it off because I felt like I came up with a better one. All right. And that one is CO2. Oh, cool. right. Okay. We played this Let's one only a couple times. Don't close it. But <laughs> I, was trying to, it. I was trying Closed to think it. of a, a game where... We were like strategizing and like coming up with plans yeah. to make something a success. And this sure. is like the number one game I thought of with that. And even it is cooperative, you know, so maybe it's not all on me <laughs> to like have the no. brains. Well, but like I feel like it, as a group, it made us like it made me feel like, like I'm we know what we're doing. And every time we play this, we're winning it because we just like it feels impossible. And then we figure it out. Right. Yeah. Me and Jeff are coming up with stuff. And now he's like, no, you guys are dumb. Listen yeah. to me. <laughs> No, that, that is such a cool feeling one. in those co-op games where everyone says a bunch of stuff and then you're like, no, this is, yeah. this is the you best guys, thing. And you this. say it and you're like, yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm the greatest. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you, you do this, and, loud, you do you this just... and then we could get it. Yeah. You know, and it's well, like, ah. and I can understand in a cooperative game how that could be tricky because you want to avoid quarterbacking, yes. you know, or being the one who's yeah, constantly like, I know best. And, but uh, to your credit, you don't do that. You know, it's more like, I think this might work out. What do you guys think? And then mm-hmm. we're like. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah, that's right. Good. So that's a good one. So now it was number three, huh? Yeah. C O two. My number three is a two-player abstract game that I've played my entire life, and it's called chess. All right. Chess is a game that uh, you know I'm not brilliant at this game. I'm I'm am very amateur at this game. But you when think anyone's I, heard of chess, I don't. Well, okay. So this You've was designed chess? in the early 1900s by Vladimir Cochon, Franz <laughs> <laughs> And uh, this one, um, when I win, or when I'm when I'm when I'm setting myself up for an awesome tactic, it feels maybe unlike anything else that I've played. It's it's got this like oh my gosh like because you're you're quite honestly you're just there to outsmart your opponent you know to capture their king and and when you do it in a way that they don't see it coming mm-hmm. and then you you know you know in your head like okay they don't see that I'm doing this and this is gonna be this is gonna be awesome and feels so good there's nothing like it and so it makes me feel super duper smart and that's my number three yeah chess. I feel like you probably feel very smart whenever you play me. <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with you. It really doesn't. I mean, because I, I've played, I play online a lot on my phone. Yeah, that's true. And I play guys that beat me consistently. But and I still, there's still moments in those games where I'm like, I just took You're his like, queen oh, and he didn't see it coming, move. and that felt yeah. so good. Oh, I lost. Yeah. Right. And it's still, I still yeah. feel smart. For I that thought moment. you might put this one on it. Yeah. You're, you're good at that game. Thank you. So that's my number three. Chess. What about you, Jeff? What's number three? Number three. I agree with Natalie. She said she struggled with this list. I came up with a lot more games that made me feel dumb than I, yes, <laughs> than I had with games list. that made me feel uh, <laughs> smart. Uh, this is another game that I love. Uh, probably, it's either second or tied for first of my favorite Feld games. That would be a game called Trajan. Oh, yeah. Mm. You do like Trajan. Love Trajan. And I get the mini games of Trajan. You know, there's like six, you know, there's this Rondell, Mancala, Mancala thing. Yes. And I just, I get the mini games and I think that's just so fun to play them all and I understand it and 
That's awesome. Yeah, that is a that is an awesome game. All right. So, so number, number two. two. My number two is. I was going to say it. It's Love Letter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> love Letter. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's when I think of a game that makes me feel smart. Like when you and me play that game, I feel like we just get it. Like you pull up a card and you just know exactly what to do. You know, there's not even, it's almost like we don't even have to think about it. We're just like, boom, 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 boom. And like, you know, whether you win or lose, it just happens to be what the cards are. But I feel like we just get that game. Uh-huh. And I wouldn't normally think that, like that's a game that would make me feel smart except that i've played with a bunch of other people and they're all like i don't like this game i don't get it It doesn't make any sense and i'm like hmm i do (laughs) 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 so that's why i picked that (laughs) as a game that makes me feel smart let's take an iq test right now (laughs) my number two is a game i haven't played in a long time i sold it off i played it probably 10 to 15 times uh earlier on and and i just seemed to i don't know i just seemed to win and get it a lot and it's called small world yeah, I played that game a bunch back in the day, and I just seemed to somehow always come out on top. Like by a few, I mean the games are always pretty close. Like I got 118 or 100 or whatever, and I felt like I was always you know kind of like I think I got this. Like I'm pretty sure I got this, and I feel like you know a lot of the trick is knowing you know when to go into decline and you know yes. when to exactly. That's like a l- big part of the game. And for some reason, I always seem to in that game do it at the right moments you know it just seems to work out in my favor and so i'm going to just pump up my ego inflate myself yeah. and say that game makes me feel kind of smart so. i just played that game recently yeah you did didn't Monday, you the, the underground Mondays version ago. cool yeah and yeah you're right it's, it's that timing yeah it's that moment right when to put your one in decline and get a new race yep if you go one turn too long you're yep. done you're done if you do it yep. too early yeah yep. there's that moment and that, if you, yeah you just get it you're right absolutely <laughs> so that's it for my number two what about you jeff what's number my two my number two was on your list that Makes you feel dumb. Yep. yep. <laughs> that would be CGE Zolkin. Yeah. Oh. Um, that game's great. I haven't played it in a long time, and I'm really Jones in to play it since we talked about it last Yeah, time. sure. And I love the gears. I just get when, because again, the rules are put your worker out, put a worker out, or take them all back. Yep. That's 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 the rules. That's right. the, the mechanism of the game. And I just, I feel like I know when to take them back. And that's, that's, that's the moment. That's hard. Oh. Um, <laughs> Because you might not get anything on this wheel, but it helps you here, and you mm-hmm. move up, and you can trigger all these kind of different things. And you got to keep a lot of stuff in your head, yeah, in that game. Because there's five, four different wheels, five different wheels, maybe four, and then the main one you turn, yeah. And you have it's so hard to know, like, okay, I have one guy on this wheel, he's that far. I have this guy over here, like this one is good, but I need to wait on that. It's it's hard to keep it all in your yeah. head. And yeah, you do a good job of that for sure. So that's awesome. That's yep. your number two. Number two, Zolkin. Zolkin. All right, let's get into number one. Number one. Number, number one. one. Isn't that a lot of fun? What do you uh, got? My number, number one? one is Mastermind. Of course. I know. Yeah. Of course it is. That. Yeah, of course. It's just, I mean, it's maybe it's not the most like complex, complicated game, but that's, Doesn't matter. that's like the probably the number one game where I feel like that's just my brain works that way and i feel really smart when we're going you know you're going through you're looking at all the pieces of information and you're like can't be this can't be this can't be this gotta be this and you're right and i'm like yes yeah you're very good at that game (laughs) you're very good at that game so yeah that one has always made me feel smart i've been playing it since i was a kid and i just love it and it makes me feel good about myself (laughs) good yeah that's awesome yeah we've been playing we played that recently we did in the last couple years well, I mean, like, we used to play it's not like just sometimes. a childhood game for us. Oh, you know, I we, know. Like, we actually yeah. play it. Yeah. Like, you know, like, it's a, yeah. right. a newer, like, version even that we play. Yes. So that's awesome. Mastermind. My number one is a game I've played seven times and I've never lost. I've never lost this game. I knew this was on there. You did. L- <laughs> I know. Oh. Wait, no, it's not Lords of Vegas. Oh, oh it's not. No, no, no. Okay. I was because say Lords because of Vegas. my winning streak in Lords of Vegas is nine. Oh, nine man. in a row. Wait, I had you played won. this seven. This game, my number one game, I've played seven times. I know never, it. Never lost. I know it. Never lost. Does it start with an H? Yes, it does. <laughs> yes. It's Hansa Teutonica. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I will say, more than the other games on this list for me, with with the exception of maybe chess, I truly feel like I know what I'm doing. <clears throat> I know what everyone else is doing. And I know how to, like, I'm like, okay, I see. This person's on this path. That person's on that path. I'm going to go over here and do this. And because I'm the only one doing this, that's going to win me the game. 
And I just know it's going to happen. And mm-hmm. if someone comes over here to do that, I have a contingency plan. And then if they do that, I'm going to, for some reason, that design just gets and clicks with me. And yes. I just get it. And it makes me feel so good at the end when, because there's a lot of times where you're playing a game, I think, and it, it's happened to me where I'm like, and Natalie used it as one of her pet peeves, where you're going along and you're like, okay, I think I got this. I think I got this. And then the end of the game comes and you're like, oh, I'm in third. <laughs> like, I don't oh. got this. Yeah. And it's like, that's kind of a bummer. In every play I've had of Hans Tatanica, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to win this. Like I'm pretty sure, and then it ends, and I do, and it's mm-hmm. like, oh, that feels that feels just so good. Yeah, so that's sure. my number one, Hansa Teutonica. Nice. All right, my number one, Jeff Caster's <laughs> number one. You guys know one. it. Oh, Ryan I know knows it, it for I know sure. It. I know it. And th- this, I would say, oh, I know falls it. in the category. Yeah, I've not won this game every single time. Does it also start but, with an H? Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> I do know that every time I've played it, I've had that feeling of like I'm doing well. Like I know I'm going to be in the mix at the end. Sure. And this is. Homesteaders. Homesteaders. I love homesteaders. Well, I, I mean, your your main opponent is Bill. Yeah. And you two are probably the best board gamers I, in terms of winning percentage that I know. So if you just stopped playing with Bill ever, you'd probably win that game literally every single time. <laughs> I, I love that game. It, I Again, I just get it. I know when to pass on the auctions. I know what tiles I need. Mm-hmm. I know where to put my workers. And it just kind of like clicks. Like, yeah, I, just I feel like you it. know... Another thing that impresses me with playing with you in, the, in this game, and, and, and Bill too, I would say, is you guys know when, like, the value in the auctions. Yeah. Because me, for me, I have this feeling, I'm like, I just want to win the auction. <laughs> and I will just bid too high. And I, there's times where I'm bidding against you, and I'm like, he's going to win. You have more money than me or something. And then you're just like, you know, I pass. And I'm like, What? How did he know to do? Why did he? Damn it! <laughs> yeah, know? and then because it, that it one worker out. that I then get maybe on that would mm-hmm. help. Yeah, it, it just kind of clicks. Or I know, like you said, where it's like, all right, it seems like these people are doing this with their town. I need to do something else. I know that they need to build this industrial building. I might be able to low bid a commercial building and sure. get it for cheaper, and then I'll I'll figure it out from there. Right. I understood twenty yeah. yeah. percent of that. Really. I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's anyway, why it's a great he game. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. It is, a gr- it is a really good game, and <laughs> one that Jeff's very very fantastic. At. So that's uh, our top five games that make us feel smart. smart. Uh, I had a uh, couple honorable mentions. So my criteria for this list was I was like, I, I want to have played these games at least three times. Yeah. Okay. So for that reason, Rahas of the Ganges just was outside. I've only played it twice. Mm-hmm. I don't know after playing it two times if that it could have just been kind of lucky. Like I just happened to see what was going on in this game. Sure. You know, this play. So I didn't put that on there. And my other one that I wanted to talk about was Cryptid. Mm-hmm. Cryptid's another yeah. deduction game, but I yeah, tell I you, when you that. are the one to figure it out, yes. it feels so yeah, good, it and it makes you feel smart. That's on yeah. my dumb list. Yeah, <laughs> Cryptid. Yeah, yeah that right. was on my honorable yeah. mention dumb yeah. list. I almost I, put Great Western Trail, but like I only played it once, and so I was like, I can't. I don't feel good about putting it on here. Yeah, I think you need more plays to yeah. know if you're smart at it, or or, you or any, conversely dumb. Do you have any honorable mentions? Um, Great Western Trail. That was, that was the one. Yeah, I told she you. I had, I had yeah. a hard time. I mean, and Coimbra, had, too. I only had one extra. Two. So I had six games that I wrote down. The other yeah. one was a game called Gizmos. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. It's an yeah, engine yeah, building yeah, game, and I just, I, I, I get it. I get how to trigger all these different actions. Mm-hmm. Like it you just have that fits. one? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I've played that a handful of times, too. Yeah. 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 Students where I just crush them. Yeah. Into a fine powder. Powder. So that's going to do it. That's going to wrap up episode 29. Thank you all for listening. Uh, we're so excited, Jeff, to have you as a permanent member of the uh, team here. Uh, it's, it's, it, it just makes sense, to Me be too. honest with you. It does. I, I think I'm excited. It, I think it's going great. really well. It feels well. natural. And we love uh, the contributions that you contribute <laughs> to the show. So until next time, uh, for Jeff the Mad Board Gamer, Natalie, I am Ryan, and we are the Gamecasters. Have a fantastic night, everybody, and we will see you next time.